Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the Tech Guy is provided by Cashfly. C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is my Tech Guy podcast. This show originally aired on the Premier Radio Networks on Saturday, the 6th day of July, 2013. This is episode 993. Enjoy. The Tech Guy podcast is brought to you by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your used gadgets. Find out what your used Samsung Galaxy, iPhone, or other smartphone is worth at gazelle.com. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. And it's time to talk about computers, the internet, cell phones and camcorders, MP3 players, home theater and all that jazz. Our Scott Wilkinson, our home theater expert, joins us at 33 and 3rd after the hour. We can talk about anything that's on your mind today at 888-8888. Slow down, Leo. Too much, cup, too much coffee. Eight. What is that number again, Heather? <laughs> 888. It says here. 888888888-ASK-LEO. Ask with a K, Leo. Ask. Well, how else would you spell it? With a Q? Yeah, ask, ask a might. <laughs> ask with Leo. Isn't there a computer company, or there was, called Compaq with a Q? <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. You never know. Behind you, if for those of you watching video, there's a guy named Jeff, Jeffrey Needles, who is assembling... A large Lego masterpiece. Jeff, wave high. Wave high, Jeff. You're on the uh, on the radio, sort of. <laughs> Not really. Uh, wow. That's going to take him a while. We're trying to do a time lapse of that. I have to find an SD card so we can do a time lapse. <laughs> Q sounds of rummaging. Q sounds of. <laughs> yeah, but you do you have a drawer like this? Maybe it's just me. Oh. I, I think a lot of geeks have a drawer like this. The messy drawer. You right? should see the drawer next to my nightstand. Or the, my yeah, nightstand. the messy drawer. It's where you throw <laughs> stuff that has no other real location. And for geeks, <laughs> oh, look, here's a micro SD card. You got an adapter? Yeah. This is 64 gigabyte. Uh, mic, mic? No, no, okay. CF. CF. Oh, compact flash? It's an old camera. Compact flash? No, I don't have any of that. <laughs> compact flash. That's like the bottom of my purse. Yeah. Well, yeah, women have that. You it's called the purse. You got a with hair on it? Yeah. Sure, a mint, a hairy mint, <laughs> a tic tac lying around, an old tic tac. Sure, <laughs> geeks have them, but they're full of they're full of old gear. They're full of uh, wires and battery, old <laughs> batteries. Adapter that fits absolutely nothing. nothing. I have a Nokia yeah. adapter that I can't use. Here's an old mouse. I used to live with one of. Here's you. false teeth. I don't know what those are for. <laughs> a mint, an energy <laughs> shot, oh. but then uh, also then there's all these old phones. Mm. Yeah, some of the old phones aren't that old. I have in the back, you know, behind me, I have a museum. We have a, <laughs> it's kind of funny because in the old studio, this was, uh, I was in an old 18th, no, 19th century uh, cottage that was built by a lumber baron here in our little town. And um, the, uh, the, the whole thing, it was a beautiful paneled room because, you know, it was a lumber baron. It was a beautiful redwood paneled room and it had leaded uh, glass cabinet behind me but it reflected like crazy on the uh, on the lights in the studio so we we kind of duplicated it behind me but we, <laughs> we left the glass out so it's a little it's a little feels a little like uh, a little like a movie set my my museum behind me there's no glass there's just crisscross for the letting where there would be glass but in there <laughs> in there is uh, the original android phone the the g1 from htc the first iPhone from 2007, celebrating its uh, uh, sixth birthday this this week. Actually, there's uh, all sorts of you know the original iPod from 2001, all sorts of history. The first Google Nexus uh, phone, and uh, well, the only reason I bring this up is because that drawer you made me want to make make some room in there because <laughs> there's new phones all of a sudden coming out like crazy. In the next couple of months, September, we expect to see a new iPhone. And the rumors, oh my goodness, have just this week have exploded on the new iPhone. And they're all completely nutty. 
well, they one of the rumors is it's not going to be the iPhone 5S, which it would be typically. I mean, that's what they did with the th the three, the 3G, 3GS, then the 4, 4S, then the 5. I guess it's not been that. It's not the precedent. It's not un, un immutable. It's only been two twice in a row. But uh, people say no, it's going to be the six. And then there's a huge rumor that Apple's going to launch uh, like a hundred new products in September. A an army, I think, is the word they used of new products. Including multiple iPhones, multiple. A there's a cheap one. There's an expensive. Go ahead, you can answer the phones. I'm sorry, I'm, I leave your mic, leave your microphone on, and I can I can leave it off now. I'll I'll shut it off so you may answer the phones. Eighty eight eighty eight. Ask Leo. That's how this all started. Uh, there's supposed to be uh, colored back plastic iPhones, big iPhones, little iPhones, small. I don't believe any of it. I think the rumor mill's just gone crazy. I do, I, I do believe there'll be a new iPhone in the fall. September is the uh, is almost certain certain time frame. It'll feature the new uh, iOS iOS seven. Uh, some you know some of these rumors are crazy. There's uh, this rumor about a fingerprint reader on the home button has surfaced again. It's an interesting idea. And Apple did buy a company that makes fingerprint readers uh, a couple of uh, years ago, a year ago. Authentic was it Authentic? So, I mean, presumably they have the technology in-house. You never know, though. Companies buy companies and they don't, they don't make anything of it or they buy them just for the patents or I don't, you know, you never, you never know. And Apple's notorious for this. I can give you, you know, a dozen companies that Apple's purchased and just kind of let disappear. But that would be an interesting idea. You put a thumbprint reader, not just for unlocking it, but for, for absolute rock-solid verification that you are who you say you are. Because then... The wallet in the iPhone, the passport wallet in the iPhone, really can be a real wallet. It could have money in it. It could have credit cards in it. And, you know, this phone would be, uh, you know, better than any credit card because it could, you know, do all sorts of things. You get to the airport, it pops up the, 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 the boarding card, the QR code right on it. Actually, Google phones do that right now. Um, but this is presumably something Apple might do. Then, of course, there'll be a new Mac Pro sometime this year. We've already seen, they already teased that, the one that looks like a black little black cylinder. It's not very big, not much taller than a, actually, it's a little less tall than a piece of paper. It's nothing like 10 inches tall. But we may also see, I think we will, new laptops. And then the real question is, is this army of new products going to include a watch or a TV? These are the two products everybody's been going crazy about for years. For Apple. And the rumor mill is just a buzzing. Just a buzzing. Apparently, Apple had a, uh, a special leadership meeting this week. Tim Cook talking to the troops. And uh, that might be where all these rumors are coming from. You know, you have a big meeting like that. It's kind of hard to keep a lid on it. Although, Apple has been pretty good. And this is why I'm skeptical. Apple has lately been really good at uh, keeping things quiet. But that's not the only new i or new phone. The iPhone. There's a new a Samsung. Do you like the big the the big phones? The phones that are almost tablets. The the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. One of my favorite phones. Very sells very well. Five million units sold. There you go. You got one. I love it, isn't it? It's nice and big. One of our studio audience members has one. Um, the next generation, the Note 3, will be out in September. Five point seven inches. <laughs> A little bit bigger than that one, but not I think not much bigger in the hand because they're just squeezing the, the side, the bezel. Uh, higher resolution screen, three gigabytes of memory, the Snapdragon 800, which is a, the new processor. All these new phones will have this very, very fast processor. That's intriguing. We're waiting to hear what, what, what Google has to say about this Moto X phone. I have an invitation to go see them uh, on Thursday and then... Uh, they're denying that it has anything to do with a Moto X phone. Well, I won't, you know, I've, <laughs> so I got the invitation and I know, you know, normally I'm kind of hesitant to do these things, but it came from an old friend and I thought, well, I'll go down and see what it is. And, uh, and then I got the email saying, and you can't say anything about it <laughs> for a while. It's what we call embargoed. So all I can say is I'm going to see something. I don't know what it is. And you're not going to hear me say anything about it for a while. I don't normally do this because I'm very bad at keeping my mouth shut. And I talk so much. I mean, I not only do six hours of this radio show, I do another 30 hours of other shows all week long on the podcast network. It's so hard for me to remember what I'm supposed to keep quiet. So I don't. But this I will. 
because they got it, they kind of they kind of they kind of sucker me in. Now I'm dying to see what could be the new Google phone, the new Motorola phone. What could that be? Eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Ask Leo. Let's get to the phones. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. I didn't do an NDA. I agreed to an embargo. Ex post facto, they kind of snookered me on the embargo. Yes, please. Police called Iced. and broke the bad news to Charles. Is that hard to do? Do we still have party ice? Hello, Alex. You're looking more and more madman every day. Are you going for that look now? And you're trying to look like him? That's cool. Your grandfather, well, this is the grandfather that worked at RCA? CBS, I mean, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Is he okay? Oh, okay. No Scott today because he's got a sore throat. Come here. You got to stand behind me and just so people can see this. <laughs> now, sco scooch down a little bit so they can see your head. <laughs> is that Brill Cream? Is that Gatorade? What is it? Groom and Clean. I think you got some on your forehead because it's very... See the shine? <laughs> I feel like I got Don Draper here. Doesn't he look like Don Draper? Look at that. I'm a jerk like him. No, Draper... No, you know what? In the last episode of the last of the season... Turned out he he's got a he's a nice guy. Don't know spoilers. No, I'm not going to spoil it for you. But 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 you got have you haven't seen it yet? You got to watch it. I know I'm such a loser. I, no, I no, feel no, like no. somebody's going to give it up and nobody's going to give it up. There's not that much. There's nothing like uh, there's not like this big plot twist. But a, you kind of see a sensitive side of Donnie. Okay. That, you know, because you're right. He's been they've been making him the worst jerk this whole season. Like worse and worse. He couldn't get any worse. And then all of a sudden, he's sensitive. Oh, you look just like him. Oh, my God, you look just like him. Now you got to get a gap in your teeth. He looks just like him. Wait a minute. Oh, oh we got to give you a pocket protector. Oh, you have to get And a bark, a tie clip, bark, tie clip. <laughs> oh, these we can arrange for you. I have an old pocket protector. The phone is great. I have that phone at home. It's red. Do you mind? But I have that phone, and I have a Western Electric phone that I got from Spark Fun. It takes a T-Mobile SIM. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm opening up eBay. We got to get you outfitted, We need man. a tie bar. Hopefully He's, one We got from... a short sleeve, which is really nice. I'm thinking, I don't know about that watch, but uh, you probably have something like that. Do you think there's a, uh, like an IBM tie bar? Oh, that's what you need, a Think tie bar. Yeah. Wouldn't that be good? eBay, here I come. And we can get you the black glasses. That's good. That's so cute that you're trying to look like your grandpa. There's a little resemblance. You're better looking, but, you know, <laughs> there's a little resemblance. Do you have a widow's peak? Not really. A little bit of one. You can paint one on. Hire whatever things on the side are. Hire. What do they call those? Those things on the side there. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a great picture. He was a uh, engineer at CBS in the heyday of the Tiffany Network. Isn't that great, Alex? I admire your gumption, Mr. Gumpel. <laughs> <laughs> He's gump gumpelishin. Alex, look at this. That's cute. There's a no. tie bar. Oh, yeah. Ooh, Isn't that nice. cute? She's found one on eBay. <laughs> it's actually a wrench. It's a wrench. A tie oh, that'd bar be good. that's a wrench. I it's have tie cute. bars at home. Yeah. I probably have tie bars older than Alex. I have all sorts of stuff like that. Okay, I got distracted. Sorry. Right, turn me. <laughs> I had to cut her off. I don't. I don't like hearing a woman say "turn me off." <laughs> I had to cut you off before you said it. <laughs> then, then I could pretend you said something else. All right, here we go. Oh, I forgot to give Alex these. He needs them. Punch cards. I've got a secret. I can't tell you. I've got a secret. I can't tell you. I've got a secret. It's the Edward Snowden theme song. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888. Ask Leo. That's the phone number. 888-827-5536. Toll free from anywhere. Uh, Heather Haman is our call screener and my cohort 
and we're helping uh, our one of our studio engineers has decided to come in looking like he was like in 1965 white shirt short sleeve black little skinny black tie his hair is greased back he is ahead of his time but you're you're doing some shopping for him because he needs a tie bar yeah there's some great ones on ebay ebay or etsy they might make some etsy no little, ebay probably but you want the classic craftsy. yeah you uh, want yeah, the original cool old you don't want a macrame tie bar you want <laughs> thank you, want you. It plated and 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 who should we talk to to begin oh this God. program today this is the best call i've taken since i got here really yeah you're not going to believe this. Walter in Lando Lakes, Florida, on line two. All right. Hey, Walter. The best. This is the pressures on Walter now. Hey, Walter. Leo Laporte, Leo. the tech guy. How you doing? I'm uh, doing wonderful. Leo, let me first say that you are my God. I worship you. I thank you so much for the advice you have given me over the years. That advice has made me tons of money, and I appreciate tons it. Tons of money? Yes. How did that? How did I make you money? Did you throw it out? Well, actually, the biggest thing you did was um, about Squarespace. Spend some money on a new phone. That's what I would do right now. <laughs> did, you get this, did you get this phone for subscribing to Time Magazine? Is it a football phone? Oh, is that a little better? Yeah. Stand next to the... Are you on a... Is it cordless? Yeah, I'm on my cell phone walking outside. Oh, yeah. Get, get somewhere where you, you're near the tower. You got it. How's that? Okay, much better. Thank you. All right. Perfect. Well, I must emphasize this i borrowed a laptop from a friend of mine okay okay not my laptop not my she laptop does, man sorry not my laptop at all she uh rescues cats and kittens for a living that's her job she loves doing it and this laptop happened to be in her van sitting there for a few months yeah along with all the cats and the cages and stuff like that yeah and she let me borrow it for a job i had to do um, on the other side of florida and unfortunately there are roaches inside <laughs> of the laptop <laughs> How do you know this? Are they coming because out? They are coming out of the laptop. What part of the laptop do they emerge from? I don't know. I've, I've seen a few on the keyboard. I've seen some coming out through the back of the sides. Um, they're just coming out, and it's embarrassing when I'm at my client's place. <laughs> there's a roach. Are you sure they're out. cockroaches? Are they, they're not palmetto bugs or earwigs? No, they're small little baby roaches, and some are a little bit bigger, so those are growing. Yeah, they ain't going to get too big because there's no way out then. They'll, that's, boy, right. reminds me of uh, Admiral Grace Hopper, who uh, when she, 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 now she says she found the first real computer bug. She found a moth that was screwing up the relay of one of the old school computers, and she taped the moth into her logbook, and it's often cited as the first ex example of a computer bug. Um, yeah, out of town, I know that. You got bugs. <laughs> I don't know how that would happen, except that it must have been the laptop wasn't on. I would think if you turn it on that the heat would drive them out of there. That's what I would think, and I've done it several times. Um, I've, I've, the, the, what I've done was I was afraid I can't pour, of course, the liquid into it. So no, no, no. I mean, you, yeah, you could submerge it. That would take care of it, but it would also take care of the laptop. Absolutely. <sighs> so the only thing I did was, that I can think of, was I got this industrial um, bug spray. And I sprayed it all in this plastic bag, let it dry a little bit. Oh, that's a good idea. And then put the the the, the, the bag in the yeah. bag, and they're still there. Yeah. <laughs> I left it in for 48 hours, and they're still. Well, you know the cockroaches will survive nuclear apocalypse. They are going to be <laughs> the one thing that will survive. All right, so we've got a solution from Doctor Mom, and I think it's an excellent idea. I want you to get some dry ice. Okay. And put that in the bag. Dry ice, as it uh, warms, sublimates. Oh. It goes doesn't go to liquid. It goes directly to carbon dioxide. Yes. And uh, it will push out all oxygen and will just be carbon dioxide. Unless cockroaches can survive <laughs> a oxygen-free environment, I think it will kill them. Now, the, well, wait a minute, though. This is a problem. We don't want to kill them in the laptop. Yes, I want to drive them out. We want to drive them out. Completely. So maybe maybe the key is to leave them away out of the laptop. Do you think are they smart enough that if it starts to get hard to breathe that they will exit that they will exit the laptop and run to the exit onto my couch into my home. Oh, well you you don't want to do that inside. No. So <sighs> You need St. Patrick to drive the... He drove the snakes out of Ireland, says Heather. He should be able to drive the roaches out of a laptop. 
Uh, fumigation's not what we want. You know, I mean, that would that would certainly take care of the problem, but then there would be uh, roaches inside your laptop, which is not a great idea. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have stuff in there anyway. Obviously, they've nested in there, so there's something in there. Yes. Have you ever opened a uh, – are there any ports on there you can open up? Yes, I, I, could, I can take them apart. That's what I do for a living, And uh, but I'm, I'm afraid. I'm terrified. Okay, well, this – all right, then do this. Then kill them first with the carbon dioxide. Completely harmless. The only thing to fear is condensation from the cold of the – uh, of the dry ice, so you want to kind of, you know, make it maybe almost make a cloud chamber. Put the dry ice in a uh, a, a, a tub beneath the bag, so that the water goes down, and then the the uh, the uh, carbon uh, dioxide will fill the bag. Uh, I think if it's sealed pretty well, that'll kill anything in there. Then the next issue, actually, you don't want to seal it completely because you want it to push out the oxygen. Um, the pr and the problem is that the carbon dioxide is heavier than air, so it will flow down. Um, anyway, you could figure this out. Put put the uh, bag okay. below the the tub of uh, dry ice. Uh, but then the yeah. next issue is you got to open it up and you got to clean it out. And I think you can do that probably pretty well with a, a, a vacuum. Be careful of knocking yeah. uh, stuff and, and static electricity. Maybe blow it out. Yeah. <laughs> you have this. You're right. This is the craziest <laughs> call ever. <laughs> Uh, I wanted to call you, and I hate for this <laughs> the reason why, but... I love the solution. I love the solution, and credit to Dr. Mom in our chat room who came up with that. That is a completely harmless pesticide. It won't hurt you as long as you, you know, can still breathe there. Don't put your head in the bag. Uh, but it will certainly it will certainly get rid of the uh, cockroaches. I've never heard of it. But, you know, cockroaches, uh, you know, they like somewhere dark. They like somewhere warm. Uh, sounds like the laptop's perfect for them. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, Doctor Mom says, put the uh, put the laptop in a sealed box, put the dry ice in a container above it, because CO two does go down. I do remember this; it sinks, and it will displace the oxygen as it goes down. The oxygen will go up, the CO two will go down, and uh, and let it sit for a little while, and uh, no more cockroaches. <laughs> oh, thank God. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor Mom. What a great one! And how did we make you money? Because this is your new business. Is that it? Well, I, well, just listening to you throughout the years and some of the ideas and, and uh, projects that you've taken on, I decided to do those for myself. That's awesome. You know, why re reinvent the wheel? And uh, so, yeah, I've done Good for you. Well, I'm so yeah, glad it's worked well. out for you. And Walter, do there will be there may be eggs in there, so those won't be killed by the CO2, uh, but you will want to yeah. get those out after you get rid of the live little critters. Okay. Holy right. moly! Right this weekend. You're right, Heather. <laughs> Strangest <laughs> call ever. <laughs> Thank you, Walter. Thank you. Great to Thank talk you so to you. Much. 8888 Ask Leo. I've, I've received where Scott Wilkinson's got a little sore throat. He can't come on today, so we'll continue on with the calls. Our home theater expert will not be with us in the next few minutes, but your call will. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. <laughs> I think we have our uh, twit bit right out of the box. So to speak. And thank you, Dr. Mom. What a brilliant solution. Is she not brilliant? Dr. Mom can fix anything. Holy magoli. That's hysterical. Oh, look. It's all done. How much was this? 400 bucks, huh? Wow. That's, a, that's really... I thought it was a little larger than that. I'm glad it has a stabilizer. What is that supposed to be? Oh, that's so I can hold it and go. Get that Galaxy S4. Red leader, red leader. Oh, actually, this is a, this is this is the bad guy. Wow, that's cool. Okay, well, um, but it didn't take you long to build that, did it? We'll have to find something a little larger for you to build next time. <laughs> How many of those are there? Just one. You have an overhead? Where's my overhead? Give me my overhead. Here, I'll get it. I'll get it in the switcher. It's the Gizwiz uh, camera. Gizwiz overhead. I'll put that in. Um... Uh, it's 18. All right. I'll put that in my. Um... I don't need Skype one anymore. Do, do. Let's see. Let's see how it's going. 
oh, we can't do anything yet because there's no... So you need a CF card. Holy cow. I have a ton of them at home. You know what? I might have a small one here. Is it gig? Okay. Is it gig enough? Because those are like those are those are like worthless. I probably have some gig cards lying around. All right. He'll be back. Brick guest. All lowercase. All one word. Right. Yep, I don't know. I'm making it up as I go along. You know, I don't even have a complex flash card. I thought I might. Well, well, well. Well, well, well. No, I know my, uh, my 5D uses a compact flash card, and I have some very nice ones at home, but I don't. Happen to have one here. I do. But I was glad I found that uh, 64 gig uh, micro SD card. <laughs> that was that was handy. I can use that for my for my uh, this Galaxy S4. Half inch of coffee grounds in a small pickle jar. The cockroaches like the coffee. Set the jar next to a wall. Wow, this is a this is a fascinating. Web seven three one two. We trap roaches with a half inch of coffee grounds in a small pickle jar. The roaches are attracted by the coffee. Set the jar next to a wall so the roaches can get in. Of course, once they're in the jar, they can't climb out. Oh man, I don't like a bugs. I don't like the bugs. You need to kill the roach eggs. You need to freeze the item below zero degrees. That's going to be a little risky. I would say, uh, oh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> it's a joke call anyway. I mean, obviously, he, <laughs> he has enough laptops. Vicky Poodle says, I'm sorry, Vicky Poole says, <laughs> Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Vicky Poodle in our chat room says when she was a genius at the uh, at the Apple store, they had a iMac, cockroach-infested iMac. So it does happen, I guess, in, uh, in warmer climes. Wow. We don't know what to do about the eggs. Dr. Mom says you could freeze it if you kept it below zero for 72 hours. That would kill the eggs, most of them. But that could also kill the... Uh, Kill the laptop. I don't know. Heather, you're making you're making gang signs. Is that is that are you trying to tell me something? <laughs> well, I thought uh, line five. Mark on six. Line six. Mark and Gardena. Yeah. Does that make sense, or would the eggs? Well, let's in? see. Mark, what's, ah. what's Mark's? What's your idea, Mark? Leo Laporte, the e tech guy. Easiest solution of all time. Go to Kmart, Target. Go get one of those vacuum seal bags that you put a blanket in that sucks all the air out. Yeah. Suck all the air out with a vacuum cleaner. Just let it sit there for a couple of days. The eggs, everything will die. They'll kill the eggs too, huh? Yeah, I mean, eggs are have, they still have to breathe. They have the, the everything has to breathe oxygen. So if you, and if then you, you know, the problem is not a perfect vacuum, is it? But I guess it might be enough. Yeah, it's a perfect. It sucks all the air out. It keeps it out for quite a while, and nothing's gonna nothing's gonna get in that thing until you pop it open. I use them for food, the little small ones, and they last a long time. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Mark. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Okay, <laughs> I appreciate the tip. Carlos in Fort Lauderdale, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Carlos. Hey Carlos! Hey, yo, Carlos! All right, I'll put him. I'll put him on hold. I think I can do that. I think I have the technology. No, 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 no. And go to. I don't know how this stuff works. It might hang up on him. Mike in San Bernard. No, I'm sorry, George in Venice, Florida. Hi, George. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Leo. Hey, George. You again. Nice to talk to you. I've got uh, my iPhone memory is filled up. I Phil. can't even take a picture. It says not enough memory to store it. Yeah, that happens. If you never pull anything off of it, it's easy enough. And uh, the problem is that my memory is filled up with audio recordings, and I... Uh, Do you have a computer with iTunes on it anywhere? Yes, indeed, and I can't find on iTunes where you think 
audio files. They've got photographs and other things, but not audio file. Yeah, well the first thing you want to do of course is uh is pull off all the photos. If you use are you on a Mac? Yeah. No, I've got the PC. PC. Yeah, pull it off and once you pull them off and it you, you can use, you know, a variety of ways to do that on a PC, a number of different programs that'll launch. You yeah, can then, I, I take photos off of the iPad, I okay. mean iPhone all the time. Okay. No so it's the audio it's the audio that's really. And you're using Apple's own recording uh well, no, it's. Uh, I guess it's a. It's an app that came off of the Apple Store. Ah. Okay, that might have something to do with. It. If you just use Apple's recording tool, uh, they will show up uh, in um, uh, in your. As I remember, they'll show up in your iTunes as a kind of music that you can take off in your music library. I think they should still do that. Look in your iTunes. And and look in the music library of your phone, and you should be able. I believe, even if it's if it's audio recordings that you made on the phone, they should you should be able to get rid of them that way. That doesn't show up in the iTunes, though. You don't see them in the library. No, no the library on the phone, right? So no, so when you hook up the phone to the iTunes, there's a library that's you know your iTunes library, but then below that there is a a device, and that's your iPhone. And uh, you should see the audio there. Now, I'm, because it's a third-party program, the other possibility that you might need to do is go into the apps. So you'll also see uh, a section for apps once you hook up the phone. And then as you scroll down, to the, you'll see a list of all the possible apps you can, that are on your computer and on the phone. But if, if you scroll below that, you'll see a list of apps you can sync. That would be another way to look at it. You need to figure out what what is that third-party app doing. You might even just have to go into the third-party app and uh, delete them there. I'm pretty sure you could do that. Then you wouldn't have to hook it up to a computer at all. So there's three different places to look. Certainly with the Apple, device, Apple recorder, you can just look in the library of the phone and uncheck them and that'll go away. Uh, you should, in some cases with third-party apps, you might be able to do it in the apps section of iTunes. Uh, you know, apps can sync. You can maybe remove it there. And finally, your last resort, and I can't imagine any recording program not giving you the capability of deleting these recordings. I would, I would guess that if you go into the recording app itself, the third-party app itself, that'll give you an option to delete them. One of those three should work. Mike in Portland, Maine, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Mike. Leo, I have another crazy question for you today. <laughs> no cockroaches? <laughs> no, not cockroaches, but but maybe something of equal value. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, my uh, my sister-in-law, who's very sweet and very kind, gave me a wonderful gift last weekend, brand new, wrapped up in a box still in shrink wrap. It's a Sony Dash. A Sony Dash. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a phone, but I'm going to have to check. Is it? Uh, does it have a keyboard on it? No, it, 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 it's called the Personal Application Viewer, and the closest I can come when I look it up online is that it's a fancy clock radio that's not supported by Sony anymore. Oh, I remember this. Yeah, it was kind of like a chumby. Yeah, yeah. Do I, I, Dr. I, Mom had one of these, didn't you, Dr. Mom? The Sony Dash, yeah. So that's a nice gift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, this was their version of the chumby, uh, and the idea was it's well, kind of a fancy clock radio. It was... A, it was it was a tablet, but it was designed to sit by your bed and then would have the weather and, you know, you could play music and stuff on it. Uh, the question is, does Sony still support it? Um, yeah. It looks like they might. If they do, then you can register it. So if you go to, uh, uh, you know, look up uh, My Dash or Dash and Sony on, on Google, and you can go to the Sony site and there's a register a button, register or add a dash of course, it doesn't seem like it's actually doing anything. There it is, yep. And you should be able to add the dash there, and then you can put stuff on it. I wonder I wonder if uh, you might be able to hack this sucker, put something more useful on it. I mean, that would be great, because from what I've read and what I've found in research and, and, and such, um, like uh, there's a YouTube video from uh, September of uh, last year saying... It won't register anymore. Sony has. Uh, yeah, they probably even killed it. Even though it's there, yeah. it's it, you know, there's nothing going on. You can't do, do anything yeah. with it. And and I mean, it, there, there it is, all wrapped up in the box, still in shrink wrap, beautiful, yeah. you know. And I don't want to take it. Welcome out. to the land of useless devices. <laughs> I have a um, 
a uh, GPS called, a, I think it was called a Dash, that's also defunct because the company that made this thing no longer supports it. Uh, but you can hack them. And I'm going to, Red Penguin in our chat room is giving us a link to a website, tested.com, where you could, you could, but this is the Chumby too, you could hack them. You could put something on there, maybe put Linux on there, have widgets. In other words, support it yourself. That would be oh, pretty well, cool, huh? I'll check that out. I'm in the chat room. I'm main guy in there. The Dash, so, uh, get ready for this, can stream Netflix videos. You see, now the, what I saw online, it said that Sony removed... Oh, but maybe they don't do it anymore, yeah. Yeah, it, re it removed Netflix, it removed um, a couple of others. Anything so your sister never used it. Your sister never used it, huh? My, no, my sister-in-law. Sister-in-law. Uh, <laughs> no, she never used it. And, she got uh, it as a wedding gift, and now 10 years later, here. It's yours. Could be anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's yours, Mike. Uh, I bet you could hack that. I bet you could hack that. Um, it, you know, I still have my chumby somewhere. It was a cool idea, but once Sony doesn't support it anymore, then you have to, you know, somehow either <laughs> either <laughs> throw it away. It's a shame, though, isn't it? These things. I mean, there's a lot of a uh, lot of stuff in there. It really is, you know, and and you know, obviously, it it gets a signal from the router, and you know, there should be some way to to hack it or use it for something. You know, it would would be nice. Well, so. if you're in the chat room, you see Da Vinci Wonder saying he views all his. Uh, Facebook and Flickr photos on his. It still works. Another chatter says, I, uh, I'm i able to uh, watch Netflix on it. So n I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of links. We'll put them in our show notes. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. <laughs> this would be a good time to mention Gazelle, wouldn't it? I don't think even Gazelle wouldn't buy a Dash. <laughs> They're not crazy. But uh, they will, if you're ready, if you're excited about the new f crop of phones coming out, they will at least buy a lot of current phones out there, even Blackberries, iPhones, of course, a lot of the, uh, you know, HTC, Samsung, LG, Motorola, Nokia. Now, here's the deal. This would be a good time to get a quote. Let's say you have, as I do, just sitting right here next to me, a factory unlocked Galaxy Note 2. It's in, uh, I would say, it's, it's pretty, well, let's say good condition. You know one of the nice things? You can, you can it, they, they, their data experts will assess the value. So you can say good, and if they'll say, you know what, this is good, this is better than good, we're going to give you a little extra money. They really do do that. Uh, they will also uh, wipe all the uh, data off of it for you. And the best, what? That's not even possible. 180 bucks? Holy moly. That's worth a lot. All right. <laughs> That's going in the box. The beauty of these quotes, by the way, is they're good for 30 days. So you're not committed to action. You have 30 days to take advantage of their offer. So if you think there's, oh, there's a new iPhone coming out, let's get rid of this old, uh, this old 310 bucks for, wow, that's for the 32 gig. Now we're starting to make some money here. We're going to pile this up here so we can get the new thing. MacBooks, Macs, iPods. Gazelle is a great way to sell your stuff. It's simple. It's easy. They they pay the postage on anything worth more than a buck. If you want the Galaxy S4 and you got a Galaxy S3, go to Gazelle. You want an HTC One, you got a Galaxy S4, go to Gazelle. Vice versa, go to Gazelle. G A Z E double -L, L E dot com. They'll even buy broken iPhones and iPads. It's risk free. Thirty day lock in. You can get paid fast by check, PayPal. You get an Amazon gift card. They'll bump it up a five percent which is very nice. So if you buy a lot on Amazon, that's a really good deal. Gazelle will pay you in just a few days. They'll send you the box so you can put it in there and in the, in the postage too. Gazelle, no wonder they paid over $100 million to half a million customers. You should get in on this action. G-A-Z-E-L-L-E dot -E -E com. Keep it moving. The best way to recycle your gadgets, give it to somebody who wants it. Gazelle dot com. So I would love, oh, look at this, that my menu is here. Greg comes in with a menu every day and gives us a choice of delicious food items. Salmon corn chowder, pork cactus chili. It's quite good, you know, if you've ever had that. It's actual cactus. They take the spines out, though. Vegetable barley or New England clam chowder. Or salad, always a possibility. And I know uh, somebody's going to want a delicious parfait. Am I right? Am I right? Are you getting a parfait? Would you like a parfait, darling? It seems a little too filling at the moment. Ah, I know what you mean. <laughs> so does New England clam chowder. <laughs>
I think I'd like a, a small uh, uh, poor cactus uh, chili. Uh, 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 thank you very much. But say that in a, like a New Mexico accent. I don't even know what a New Mexico accent is. I've yeah. only seen Breaking Bad. I don't know. I could. <laughs> oh, look, he's turning to assemble. There we go. The platform. This guy has become a pro. Now, Greg says once Jeff leaves, because Jeff's going to go back to school in the fall. Once Jeff leaves, Greg wants to take over the Lego assembly. I think we should go beyond Lego, though. Jeff has done an erector set tractor uh, for me, or a crane. He's done, of course, the bat, the Death Star. <laughs> and you don't know where to go to. This guy's name is. Do you remember this, Heather? Remember his name? Falco, no. Taco. You were close. Taco. Is that a reference to the soup? I have. I don't know. Nathan is our musical director, and is he is a mysterious fella. Mysterious and wonderful. Putting on the Ritz. Eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Ask Leo. Put on the phones. Let's go to uh, Mike in San Bernardino, our next caller. Hi, Mike. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Good morning, sir. How are you today? I am well, Mike. How are you? I'm doing fine. Uh, I'm a first-time caller, although I've tried several times to get through to you. It ain't easy. I've been successful. Yeah. So. Well, imagine. We have six lines. We could have more lines, but we don't want to keep people on hold for days. So yeah, we have six imagine. lines and uh, over a million listeners, so it's kind of hard. Okay. Well, I, I'm not calling a rock cockroaches today. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. I'm relieved. <laughs> uh, what I am calling about is my wife uh, bought me a uh, Nook HD Plus 9-inch tablet. Nice. And um, my question has to do with virus protection. I mean, obviously, it's got all the Nook reader capabilities on yeah. it, but it's a full-fledged tablet. Yeah. Also, and my question has to do with virus protection on it. Uh, you know, I don't really think it's an issue yet. I keep waiting for, I'm calling it smartphone apocalypse, where uh, where some the bat, you know, uh, these these devices are always on the internet. They're just begging to be used. A phone, somewhat more so than a tablet, but still, uh, why don't they get hacked as much as computers? I don't, and I don't know what the answer is to that. Um, it is an Android device that Nook, although you know they've covered up the Android with the Nook interface. Mm, yeah. Um, there. All I, I I run this on all my Android devices. I'm not sure if it runs on the Nook or not. You you can only buy stuff from the Nook store. Is that right? Uh, I believe I haven't really done a lot of research, but I believe you can actually go to the uh, the Play Store, the Play Store, right. also oh, and get right. some stuff. So here's what I would do. I would use Lookout, which is free on the Play Store, and all Lookout really. It's not exactly an antivirus, but it's good because it's lightweight and it does some protection. What it does is it scans the app. When, the, when you download and install an app and checks it against a database to make sure it's not got anything nope. malicious in it. And this is more important now because there is a Android virus out there, or hack, I should say, an exploit, uh, that is a little of concern. It was just announced this week, and uh, the, the uh, statement from the guys, and we haven't seen... We haven't seen it yet, although he's going to... It's Blue Box Securities announced this. We're going to see it at uh, the Black Hat Hacker Conference uh, a little bit later on uh, in this year, I think next month, in Vegas. But uh, according to Blue Box, 99% of Android devices can easily be hacked in such a way that the bad guy could uh, gain access to everything. Uh, the problem is that they could insert this malicious code into a benign application. So the, tr the, the st my strong recommendation is to get your apps from known quality sources. So that would be either the Barnes & Noble Nook Store or the Google Play Store. I would put Lookout on there because Lookout will have a database of, of known dangerous apps. And I would keep an eye out for patches. Now, unfortunately, Barnes & Noble's not doing very well with the Nook, and I, I'm not sure how often they're going to update this thing. The only phone up to, to, to date uh, to be patched is the Samsung Galaxy S4, uh, which is the probably the number one selling phone right now. 
in the Android space. But uh, if you have a Nexus phone from Google, if you have an HTC, if you have an LG, if you have a Motorola Droid, you're vulnerable. And these companies have to go out and update their software. Um, it's not a difficult thing to fix, apparently, but they need to fix it. Blue Box has informed the companies on, on what the issues are. They haven't told the public yet for obvious reasons. But you can bet as soon as they put out this press release that the bad guys started to look. Um, so a Nook, you know, is going to be, the because BNN is kind of phasing the Nook out, I think they're trying to find a buyer, might be less likely to be protected. On the other hand, it's probably less likely to be hacked. Be careful what you install. You don't need to install a lot of apps on a Nook. And uh, I would put Lookout on there. I would put Lookout on there. I think that's the that's the best bet. Uh, if you're if you're buying from the Play Store, it's highly likely you're okay. So the deal with that is uh, not so much that Google vets these items because they don't they don't vet them particularly, but the, but they are they're at least to somebody paying attention. And should one of these items be dangerous, Google has a kill switch they can throw and uh, remove and literally remove that app from your uh, device. I don't. There are antiviruses out there. I don't know if they work any better than Lookout because of the nature of, of the way the phone works. I'm not sure I'd recommend uh, the, the, an antivirus. I think Lookout's fine. You just want something that will check your downloads and make sure that it's, you know, not known to be bad. I wouldn't worry right now, Mike. Um, I think you know, the problem with the problem with these phones is there's such limited. Uh, memory, there's such limited CPU power that you don't want something always running in the background. It'll just kill your battery. So Lookout's, to me, what I use, and I think more than adequate. Phil and Van Nuys, and it's free. Phil and Van Nuys, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Oh, hi, Leo. I needed your expertise on this. Uh, I got a new computer a couple of months ago because my old one died, and uh, it seems like I've had a lot of problems just right off the bat. And one of them is that the Windows update went that went out of whack right away. Yeah. And uh, what I had to, I had a technician come out to see if he could fix it, and he spent a couple hours on it. He was my regular technician, and he he couldn't fix it after about two hours. So he said the only thing left for him to do would be to come back and reinstall the operating system. Which is generally the best thing to do. It's too bad. I mean, this is the only problem you have is that you can't do updates. Right. Yeah. So the operating system has to be reinstalled. Well, it doesn't have to be, but that's if he, you know, this guy sounds like he's. I mean, presuming he knows what he's doing. So what happens? It's not unusual if an update. Uh, this is this is kind of um, a natural flaw in a system that allows uh, automatic updates. If an update fails for whatever reason, and there are lots of reasons an update could fail, permissions, for instance, on a folder that it should be uh, writable. Or is not writable, the update can't continue, and then the entire update process gets jammed. It cannot continue until that update is cleared. That's almost always what happens. Microsoft has a whole update troubleshooter you can look at. I presume okay. your guys so, doing. Yeah, I was going to ask you if I should call Microsoft. No, don't call them. But go, but on their knowledge base, uh, support.microsoft.com. Uh, you can if you just search for. Uh, stuck update. You'll find a whole troubleshooter that you can walk through. I, I'm well, again. I'm going to presume that this is the guy. This is what the guy did. If he knows what no, he's he, doing, he, he, he disconnected the whole thing. He, he got the Windows updates turned off completely. Well, that's the wrong solution. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, in effect, that's what's happening because you're stuck. But what you, what you, it's so important that you run these Windows updates. If you don't run these Windows updates, you're just cruising for a bruise, and you're waiting. You're, you're a sitting duck for any bad guy on the internet. Because what happens when there's an update? And Microsoft does this the second Tuesday of every month. It puts out updates, critical updates that fix flaws in the computer. And the bad guys wait, and they look, and they say, oh, well, yes, let's see. What did Microsoft fix? Huh? Now, the fix doesn't say what's wrong, but it gives them a very good way, you know, place to look. Ugh, there seems to be something wrong with the uh, run DLL dot uh, DLL. What is that could be? Uh, let's go look. And, they, and it gives them a roadmap. So within usually a day of the patches being shipped by Microsoft, the bad guys have figured out a way to take advantage of computers that weren't patched. Do you see? So the patch is a fix, but it's only good if you can uh, uh, install it. So a, a Microsoft Windows machine that cannot install critical updates is just a sitting duck. 
you know. So you've got to unstuck this log jam. And, uh, you know, Microsoft has a troubleshooter. There's fix-its. There's all sorts of things you can try. I'm going to presume that your tech guy is smart enough to have done that. But if he hasn't, then you can go ahead and try it. Don't call Microsoft. They'll charge you 99 bucks. Uh, it's it's probably not worth it. Um, Big Ginge reminds me that ESET.com, E-S-E-T.com, one of our sponsors, I should say, has a uh, services fixer that sometimes will fix this. If you install an update that doesn't finish, it just can't do any more updates because it's an unknown state at this point. It doesn't, it cannot do more. Each update builds on the update before it. So you got to fix it. Uh, and it's really important that you do. If, if you cannot, if you've done everything you can do, you've run the software, we'll put links in our show notes at Tech Guy Labs to the various programs, the Microsoft Fix-It page, the ESET Services Fixer. If that doesn't do it, then yes, you do need to reinstall Windows. It's just not worth it. It's just not worth it because you, you're, in effect, out there without any protection at all. Leo Laporte, the Tech Guy. Yeah, turning off updates is not the fix. Unfortunately, it's the wrong thing to do. So, I, uh, yeah, there's a number of things in the troubleshooter. Oh boy, look at that. He's building right now. <sighs> well, DARPA, you can turn off auto updates, but I presume that you still run the updates at some point. It's not a bad, you know, a clean install, people act as if, you know, oh my God, at the end of the world. I do it every few months anyway. It's not a bad thing to do. I don't know the Mr. Fix-It program. Is that the Microsoft one? The F Microsoft Fix-It? The little guy with the cop outfit? <laughs> Whatever. Not yeah, it's, it's uh, Clippy minus... <laughs> Uh-oh. An SFO? Oh, dear. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Uh, where are you seeing the story? Huh. I wonder why CNN doesn't have it. That's why I keep this on, is for stuff like that. Let's see if the gate has it. Yeah, I have uh, CNN updates on my phone, too, and I haven't seen anything. Boy, it must have just happened. It's not even on the San Francisco gate. Uh, apparently, a plane crash at SFO. Asiana Airlines. Plane crashing while landing at SFO. Oh, that's terrible. Asiana OZ777. Flight looks like it's HL7742. Nobody's got this story. It must have just happened. Huh? Um, I don't know. He's got a magic phone. Heavy? Is that for pilots? I don't know Heavy. I never heard of Heavy.com. Plane crash reported at SFO. Oh, boy. A triple seven. Oh, boy. According to reports from the ground, the plane broke apart as coming in. People being evacuated by the emergency slides. But Twitter's got it, of course. That's the place to go for news now. CNN doesn't have it. But Twitter's got it. Large plane down. Wow. That's Twitter for you. Holy cow.
Yeah, it's good news that people are going down the slide. Unbelievable. That. Unbelievable. They're talking about a train fire in Canada. It's a pretty bad one. <laughs> but they, they, uh, they really ought to monitor Twitter. <laughs> HL7742. Flight out of Seoul, possibly. It's an uh, OZ777. Wow. You're not getting the Wi-Fi? I'm sorry. I don't know if we have any engineers out there. It won't, it won't hook up to it? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to give you your money back. I'm so sorry. Yeah, you paid five dollars to get in this, right? Yeah, planes are circling. We should uh, actually. What is that live? Is it flight radar? Yeah. And see, now still doesn't have the story. see any planes around the uh, around the airport which means they're making them circle the yellow uh, are live real time Still nothing on CNN. <laughs> Apparently Fox has it. Preempted on
Well, a good day to you, Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. 8888-ASK-LEO is the number for those uh, stations listening live. Uh, a lot of Twitter traffic about a plane crash in San Francisco, a 777 uh, from Asiana Airlines. And uh, while it's not on CNN yet, I think Fox has a story. And for those stations uh, taking us live, you might want to check with your newsrooms. The FAA is confirming a Boeing 777 operated by Asiana Airlines crashed while landing at SFO, according to NBC News. 8888-ASK-LEO. Apparently, uh, you know, it's interesting because this news now, news comes from Twitter. It's been on Twitter for five minutes. We've been watching the uh, Twitter updates. Um, apparently, the sli they have uh, slides uh, and passengers are evacuating, so that's that could be good news. We'll see. 8888-ASK-LEO. That's uh, the phone number to uh, call if you want to talk about uh, tech. This just shows you nowadays, I mean, really... Uh, social media is the source for um, a news, uh, faster uh, and uh, not always accurate, admittedly. But uh, yeah, now CNN's uh, covering it. Um, if you want to keep up with what's going on, I'll tell you, when I hear something's happened, I often uh, go to Twitter first. What a change that is. But it is so important, I think, that uh, people understand that, you know, it's happened before that uh, there, there, you know, error, erroneous reports on Twitter. So you have to take everything with a grain of salt. But once you, I think we start, we started to learn how to how to vet stuff. Once you see a lot of tweets from different sources, of course, pictures, and there were a lot of pictures coming across Twitter immediately. Um, and then and then you check the news channels. And what is it's interesting? What is CNN showing? They're showing YouTube video. That's all they've got. They've got YouTube video. Um, amazing. Amazing. Well, I hope everybody's okay on that flight, and we'll uh, keep you posted. 8888-ASK-LEO is the phone number. Going back to the phones, uh, let's go to Frankfort, Kentucky. Chris is next on the line. Hi, Chris. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Leo. This is Chris Ziegler. Hey, Chris. Nice to talk to you. Uh, I was wondering how can I move my contacts from... Uh iCloud to like Gmail or someplace else because it's stuck in that V card crud, and I can't. Yeah, get it. I'm not crazy. But I'm not crazy about iCloud. Um, more and more, what I'm telling people, even if you're using an iPhone, an Apple device, or app address book on uh, on OS 10, Google's the place to store contacts, calendars, and to do lists. They've really figured out the the best way to do this, and and the painful moment is going to be moving to google but once you've got everything on google i think you're done you can you know all of apple's os 10 apps will sync with your google account um even your iphone you log into your google account and boom everything's there certainly if you're using android it's it's the only thing that makes sense the problem of course is that first move and i guess that's what you're talking about chris you can export and Google a Calendar will import in almost any form or fashion. Here's what I would uh, suggest, are, uh, Chris. Are you using oh, yeah. a, Are you using a Macintosh? Um, I'm using a Windows laptop. Windows, okay. If you had a Mac, the best thing to do would be to sync it with the address book. S address book lets you back it up, and I would back it up before you make any changes, and then export it out of the address book. Um, how are you going to get it once it gets on the computer and you've got it out of the address book? How do you get it to C the CSV, which is that? Because because uh, Google will import it. Com co it's called CSV is comma separated values is a standard format, but uh, the V card format or the CSV format or even tab separated, to Google will import. So the the okay. but the only it's messy because there may be. You know, you may create duplicates and so forth. So what I what I always suggest when you're do, making this kind of a move is back, back up every step of the way, right? Make a copy every step of the way. And then uh, once you get over to Google, go through it on, on the web through Google very carefully. Get it just the way you want it. Delete duplicates, all of that stuff. Save that out. That's now your perfect address book in case of duplication once you start synchronizing. If you make backups every step of the way, you're going to have a good copy. And by the way, uh, you know, once once you know, it's gr it's great to do it onto Google. Once you have it on Google, turn off syncing from other places, and I think you're done. 
I don't think you'll ever have to do this again. So there's a point of pain right now. <laughs> but once it's done, it's done. And even on calendars, Google has gone back on the... Originally, Google said, we're not going to support the uh, open standard, CalDAV standard anymore. And there was such a howl of pain. I've, I've, it's rare that Google does this. Google backed down and said, oh, I guess we will. So the only issue you're going to have is Microsoft Windows Phone. Um, that's unfortunate. It's one of the reasons I don't use a Windows Phone. It's kind of tricksy to get it to work. Um, but it's worth doing it. It's worth doing it. 8888 Ask Leo. Sandra in Anaheim Hills, California. Hi, Sandra. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, nice, nice to talk to you. Thanks for calling. I've had a whole bunch of Wi-Fi issues, but the most recent one that I've landed on with is with my iPad. Yeah. Um, actually, they sent me to the Apple Store first, and the Apple Store said I had to replace my chip. I went to the what's going What's going on? Just tell me what's going on first. Well, what's going on is that I'm I'm my iPad is hardly working half the time with the Wi-Fi service. So it's searching or it's, it's not uh, connecting half the time. Okay. Replacing the chip is not doable on an iPad. That's a new, that's a new iPad. Oh, no. I'm, I, I, well, the, not the chip. The, uh, I'm sorry. I know it's uh, the actual uh, card for the AT&T hookup. You know ah, the I SIM chip. Ah. Yes. Uh, that's not it either because Wi-Fi is not going through the SIM chip. has nothing to do with that. Oh. So whoever's talking to you is a nitwit. Well, they mostly are, especially at AT and T. Yeah, we'll just put a new SIM chip in. That has nothing to do with Wi Fi. Uh, you could take the SIM chip out, and Wi Fi still works. Has nothing to do with it. So um, it is true that some iPads, Apple stuff, seems to have trouble with Wi Fi. I'll be honest with you. The new MacBook Airs notoriously having problems with Wi Fi, and, and Apple's trying to track it down. I do remember which which. Uh, Revision. What version? Uh, how old is your iPad? Because oh, it's three years old. Yeah, some of yeah, that was the generation that had some problems. Oh, great. Um, yeah, go to Apple. Again. <laughs> oh, you already went. Yes. What do they say? Well, they said uh, go to AT and T. They gave me the chip. They after. said go to AT and T. Yeah, they they gave me the chip for AT and T, but they said AT and T had to program it. Yeah, they have to activate it. But that's yeah. so. Are you sure it's Wi Fi you're having trouble with? Yes, it is. Why would they do that? That has nothing to do with Wi-Fi. Because, because that's what I've been experiencing with uh, them. I don't understand. Well, but they must have decided that there was a issue with your AT&T connection. Because the Wi-Fi is separate. So I you're saying, so you have a Wi-Fi access spot at home? Yes, I do. Like an airport or a Linksys or something like that? Mm, no, I, I actually have, I just purchased, but I haven't activated at the new Verizon hotspot. Okay, but you haven't activated it. No, because I had trouble getting... So how are you getting Wi-Fi? Where are you getting Wi-Fi? I'm getting it from my house, which is an AT&T router. Okay, so you have AT&T internet service. Correct. And they, have a, uh, and they gave you one with antennas, so you have wireless in there. And when you go into your settings, you search for it. It shows up the name that you gave it, right? Correct. And, and the password. And the pass you, you click that, and you enter in the password, in, and then you do you see it? Connect? Do you have, does it say connected? Do you have bars on it? Yes. Yes, okay. I do. And then it goes into the mode of searching, and then it goes no service. Got it. Yeah, that's a, that's a notorious problem with iPads. Okay. And I have to say that Apple is, I don't know why Apple. <sighs> well, okay. Somebody in the chat room said that the older iPads did need to be activated via a SIM before you could get Wi-Fi. I don't believe that, but that's maybe the case. I can't understand why they, why they had anything to do with AT&T. Wi-Fi is right or not. Go back to the Apple Store. Say, fix the Wi-Fi, please. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Yeah, I, either she's not understanding the problem or not communicating properly, or they're not. Somebody's not. Hey, let's face it. We're all trying to find um, value these days. We're all trying to find the best value for the buck. And when I think about value... Yeah, the searching may be... Extreme, the best value... Maybe it's searching... $14.95 a month? 
you're going to save hundreds of dollars a year. With DSL Extreme, everything's just as fast. There's no dialing in. There's no waiting on downloads. You can surf the net, store your photos, download music and video, get driving directions and everything. I love DSL Extreme. That's who I use. And at fourteen ninety five a month, that's who you I've have. seen so many problems, oh, Wi-Fi problems with uh, uh, iPads that I'm not shocked. Free, free 24-7 support. You even get email powered by Google with virtually unlimited storage and free online documents. I'm not, but I'm not, you know, it's hard sometimes to know what the problem is because I don't, it's unclear. I'm not sure why they replaced the SIM. Here's a... Uh Possibly from Taipei now, not from uh, Korea. Here's a guy who says, I just crash landed at SFO, tail ripped off. Most everyone seems fine. Uh, okay, that's a, uh, this is a path post by David Eun. There's a, but that's the, that's the most accurate uh, report right there. Most everyone seems fine. This guy was apparently on the plane. David E U N just crash landed at SFO. You could see he got a he got a picture as he's getting off. Tail ripped off. Most everyone seems fine. I'm okay. Surreal. And you can see the uh, the escape slides there. And obviously he's uh, just <laughs> he's not the only one. There's people taking. <laughs> it's amazing. Social media. It's truly really amazing. <laughs> There's other people taking pictures there. Meanwhile, uh, CNN's got a blurry, shaky picture from a mile away. Wow. Yeah, you want to know what's going on? Go to Twitter. So uh, that is... I should retweet that, too. That's a significant... Yeah, that's not... Uh, there's one from a guy who was on the plane. There's a tweet here. Looks like the tail came off, and uh, the guy who was on the plane said At most everybody's okay, as far as he could tell. Yeah, that smoke doesn't look good, but I suppose everybody could get out. Like, uh, I have a picture. Did you see this picture from the guy who just got off? Let me see if I can find it again. And the gear's not underneath it. The trim chip are hard landing. Hard yeah. Hard I'm going to retweet this. I, I won't say it's carrier, but I'll do that for a living. Oh, Yeah. Your plan a pilot? Oh, wow. No wonder you were following this closely. You fly triple sevens? Jets? Yeah, we, you don't have to say, obviously. Um, but but if you look at this, can you... Yeah, the gear's not down, right? But it's crushed? But the fuselage is okay, right? So... Yeah, so it must have fallen out, yeah. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 8888, ask Leo. I've just retweeted a tweet from a fellow named David Eun, E-U-N, who... Uh, uh, apparently was on the flight, the Asiana uh, flight that just crashed at SFO. He's got a picture uh, so close to it that I think it must have been a passenger getting off uh, the plane. Uh, you can see uh, uh, evacuation slides on the mid door and the front door. You can also see that the tail is missing from the plane. There's some smoke coming off of the plane, but the plane itself looks relatively intact. He says, I just crashed, landed at SFO, tail ripped off. Most everyone seems fine, thank goodness. I'm okay, surreal. So that just, again, shows you uh, 
the power of social media. There's also somebody in his picture taking a picture, and I'm sure that there's a number of people who immediately got off the plane and started tweeting. Uh, pretty remarkable. Uh, and it and uh, it does look like the uh, while the, the the landing gear was crushed, that the fuselage is mostly intact, and um, it doesn't look like smoke's coming out of the fuselage. So that that would be uh, good news. So. Uh, amazing, amazing story. 8888 Ask Leo, and there's a tech angle, as there is with most everything these days, and that is how quickly uh, social media informed uh, people. Um, and how many people are listening, it's interesting, on the web to emergency services radio from the airport, uh, from police and fire. Um, Somebody is uh, tweeting that uh, there were 290 passengers on the plane, one infant, according to the San Francisco Fire's uh, live audio feed. Um, we're seeing videos now and pictures from people getting off the plane. Uh, just to repeat, uh, a Boeing 777 looks like uh, Asiana Airlines. Uh, not sure where it's flying from. A uh, crash landed in uh, at SFO just about uh, 20 minutes ago. And... Uh, Twitter, the first place people learned about it. Pretty amazing. 8888 Ask Leo. We'll go back to the phones. Uh, I imagine most of the stations taking the show live have already gone to uh, news coverage. But, of course, we must soldier on, for those of you not listening live. Uh, Diane in Riverside, California. Hi, Diane. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi. Um, I sure hope you can help. I will try, um, Diane. I did a terrible thing. Oh, no. Um, yeah. You know how you assign a keystroke to a particular symbol? <laughs> yeah. Well, for some reason, I needed to use the scent sign a lot the other day, which uh, I, I can't explain that either. But I assigned Command C to it. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. Oh, no. Now you can't copy anymore. That's correct. Yeah. Well, that's easy, easy to fix. Uh, you're on a Mac, I take it. Uh, yes. Yeah, because I heard the command word, so that uh -huh. means you're on a Mac. So you're going to go to your system preferences. Okay. And uh, I think you're going to go to a keyboard. Okay. And, and there's a keyboard shortcuts tab there. And oh, okay. you'll see all the shortcuts, including application shortcuts. Uh, and you can just... You know, worst case, there's a big restore defaults button for people who accidentally do this. <laughs> yeah, because you can't copy anymore, can you? No, I yeah. can't. <laughs> yeah, I would just, uh, unless you've assigned a lot of keystrokes in the past and you don't want to lose those, I just restore defaults. Oh, okay. Oh, boy, I'm safe. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's not a bad thing, really. In fact, it's a good idea. But you know that option, uh, I think it's option dollar sign will, will give you the sense key. Option dollar sign. Yeah, let me just try it on my uh, on my Mac in front okay. of me in front of me because I want to because then once you once you know that then you you actually in effect have a shortcut for it, don't you? Yeah, I guess you do. Huh? Yeah, let me just try it here and see if it works. I think it was option uh, dollar sign. Yes, it is. Option dollar sign. Yeah. I see it actually on the keyboard. That's yeah. great. Or it's option four. I mean, the do option the reason four. I remember it is because the dollar sign is dollars, and if you hit option, then that would make sense. It'd be sense. Yeah, right? it makes sense. Yes. So there's not. It's not shift option. It's just option four. Yeah. Okay. Oh, great. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're very welcome. My pleasure. I love I love problems that are this easy to solve. I wish they were all this easy. Uh, that's on a Mac only, of course. Carlos, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hello, thank you for taking my call. Thanks, Carlos. What, what can I do for you? Uh, I'm looking for a digital camera to take pictures of a quarter-scale RC cars that I'm building. Oh, fun. Plus all the parts and everything that goes with it. Yeah, what you want is what's called a macro lens. Macro means you're shooting something at a one-to-one -one size. So when you use a macro lens on something that is a quarter-scale, mm -hmm. you... you, you in effect, you're going to make it fill the screen, which is what you want. Okay. Right? So uh, okay. many, many cameras have macro capabilities. Uh, even point-and-shoot cameras have macro capabilities. Um, lighting aside, because I know I'm important. Yeah, lighting's tricky. Like yeah, and you're probably going to want to use a little tripod because it's hard to focus and it's hard to hold steady when you're in a macro mode. Yeah. Does the Canon PowerShot uh, FX500IS 
has a micro feature? I bet it does. A quick, easy way to do that would be go to uh, dpreview.com where they review all the cameras, and they have a very nice table of capabilities. Now that you know what you're looking for, it shouldn't be too hard. You're looking for one-to-one -one macro. One-to-one uh, -one macro. Now, if you're willing to get uh, a very fancy... Oh, that was a Samsung executive that was tweeting. David Eun. Wow. Uh, if you're willing to get a very uh, fancy camera, you know, a, a, an SLR, there are specialized macro lenses that give you very high capability. But on a point-and-shoot, um, usually... In fact, NW is telling me this in the chat room on the Canons. It's a flower icon. So it's a special scene mode with a flower icon. Try it. Okay. If you've got, do you, do you not have the camera, or is it a camera you already have? No, I saw one. I'm looking at because they have it for um, it's two ninety nine. They have it for one ninety nine and a few prices. Yeah, that's online. a good. That's a. It's a great camera. Just yeah, you need to check if it has macro mode first. Okay. Yeah, and so you know sometimes they fake it. <laughs> the best macros, you know, you sometimes see beautiful flower or bug pictures. You know, be a bee pollinating a flower those are macro shots when you get something that is essentially real size which is kind of you know filling the frame that's a macro mm -hmm. shot sometimes they call it one to one okay all right i appreciate it i think that's a nice uh, that power shot's a very nice camera i bet you anything it does a pretty good job uh eliza in florence southern yes. california mm -hmm. hi is it elizer or eliza elia sir nice to talk to you Hi, Leo. Oh, before I go into my question, can you imagine all those people in me there checking their Twitter accounts? You know, a friend of mine, Dave Weiner, is tweeting. He says, I'm 45 minutes out of SFO. What's going on? And people are <laughs> tweeting him back. Twitter is an amazing communication platform, and I know that some schools even are now using Twitter for emergency communications. They're looking into using Twitter in emergencies. It, that is, it is kind of an amazing story. You know? Yeah, but that's not what I want to listen to when I'm about to land. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, but on the other hand, I think information's good. Information's yeah. good. You know, the more we have, the better. Well, my question is the following. I know you have phones with the four uh, major cell carriers. Yeah. Hang on a bit. we got to take a break at the bottom of the hour. I hear the magic music, but we will. you'll be next as we return. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Well, Johnny, do you want to talk about the crash? Yeah, I think we should. Twitter is just all over it. So much better job than uh, the mainstream yes. media. Now we're getting sure. some close-up pictures. Uh, we had uh, we had a, a a plane captain actually in our studio. Hey, there's a there's a better picture if you if you want. He talked a little bit about what happened. Oh, that plane is burnt up now. <laughs> but apparently, according to uh, Twitter, a, a, a Samsung executive named David Eon was on it, and he, yeah. uh, he passed I, yeah, it Yeah, I out. tweeted that. Yeah, I retweeted it as well. Uh, he uh, believes that most people got off, but look at that. What a and mess. I, and I just, I just tweeted something from the uh, fire department saying that all 300, it says 303 accounted for, which I don't oh, know how. That's, that's good there, news. Cause there's, but the plane only holds 240, I thought. They said there were 290 uh, on or 290. it, including one baby. And if they've got 300 off, that's about 303 off. That's that's including oh, that, that, crew, that's what, right? That's including crew, yeah. Yep, yeah, yeah. it says 303 SOB, all 303 accounted for. Third alarm. It's a three alarm. It's the Asiana Flight 214 from Seoul. Yeah, yep. But you, this is all from uh, Twitter. So uh, so uh, responsive. That's how we found out about. It. So we had a captain, a, fl uh, a commercial captain in the studio, and um, uh, just now. Yeah, and uh, he's nope. he he was looking at the pictures. He said, "Yeah, the if the if the tail had come off in flight, it would be a lot worse. It obviously came off oh, after God. landing. It, it crushed the uh, landing gear." which is not unusual. There's a, quite a bit of burn now, but it looks like that burn happened after the fact because the picture I was looking at looks like... Uh, it, it looks like it could be a miracle that everyone yeah, survived. Yeah, it looks like it's I a mean, miracle, I, yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm praying. I mean, everyone survived, obviously. Just whenever you see a crash like this, you know, especially from someone who travels so much, your oh, heart just... terrible. Yeah. ...tears up. Yeah, it's scary. A 777 is <laughs> a big plane. It is a big plane. Big plane. Um, um, yeah, and if that happened over so, the ocean. So, so there are some websites we can talk about. Okay. And Twitter, obviously, most yeah. important. And what's interesting is people are retweeting. Here's a picture of the actual crash, it looks like.
It's amazing. Well, extreme. Well, it's kind of a, a <laughs> tough time, but Johnny Jett, our uh, travel expert, joins us every week at this time to talk about travel. Johnny, you're back from your incredible vacation. I'm still traveling. I'm actually in Erie, Pennsylvania, visiting oh. my dad. And Johnny, how many uh, how many miles a year do you fly commercial? Thousands, oh, hundreds of thousands. Uh, uh, no, I fl about a couple hundred thousand, almost. Couple hundred thousand. So when you yeah. see a crash like this, it must be uh, it must be chilling. It's, dev it's devastating. I, I had goosebumps. I almost started crying, and then I started reading. That looks like almost. Uh, Supposedly everyone survived, but I mean the, it's still very early. The pictures I'm seeing on but, CNN, the plane is entirely burned out at this point. Although uh, this is where social media was really quite interesting. We were all watching Twitter. That's how we first uh, learned about it. Um, right. And there, in fact, there was an airline captain in studio uh, with us uh, during it, and uh, he was the one who informed me. I guess he had he was he was following it somewhere. And uh, uh, the, the most important tweet so far of the day was from a guy named David Eun, who's apparently a Samsung executive. He uh, posted a picture on PATH, which was later tweeted uh, that it was obviously uh, right outside the plane after evacuation. He says he believed everybody got off, that the tail had fallen off during landing. Um, right. and the and pictures are just devastating. It looks like there was quite and a it, fire after the fact. But it, it really reminds me of nine of uh, not nine eleven of the uh, miracle on the Hudson with yeah. Captain Sully. Yeah, because uh, whoever was flying that plane, uh, a flight from um, uh, a flight from Seoul, uh, Korea, in the very last stages of the flight, uh, whoever was flying that plane uh, <laughs> got it down safe and sound. Uh, apparently, the landing gear crushed, and they're not on the uh, tarmac; they're uh, they're off off the runway. Um, so the most promising tweet so far was from the SoCal EMS fire at SoCal EMS fire. And it says SFO update 303 SOB, all at 303 accounted for. Amazing. So amazing. Yeah. And, and, uh, and uh, it, 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 you know, now, of course, uh, dramatic pictures from uh, Channel 2 in San Francisco on CNN and elsewhere, uh, helicopter pictures. And that plane is devastated. Uh, but um, apparently, and also yeah. if you get on the hashtag SFO, it's just flying yeah. through, and there's yeah. all kinds of updates. You just don't know who to trust or what. Well, so and that's the important kind of message. Yeah, that's the important message. Is you can read a lot of stuff on Twitter. How much of it is accurate is unknown. But you know, when you start, when you start seeing multiple tweets saying the same thing, not repeating each other, but actually with different information, um, I think it starts to become more credible. And, and boy, it's just for uh, sure. Just and those flying out of SFO today or going into SFO, is right now it's closed. If you go to uh, fly.faa.gov, fly you will see the flight delay information for all of America, Air Traffic Control System Command Center, and you'll see there's a little orange dot on SFO. If you click it, it will tell you um, my – it says so airport closed due to aircraft, operations. Yeah, due to aircraft – Accident airport close Accident. to operations. There's a traffic management program, ground stop, um, and I I imagine that's gonna that's gonna be for a while. So expect some. It's gonna be for a while. Significant. So delays. if you if you really have to get out, I, I would go out, you know out of Oakland or San Jose, and I'm sure some of the flights are gonna be rerouted. You know, in, in the international flights, you know they might be going to San Jose or or L.A. even probably. Yeah. But um, also make sure you sign up for all the flight alerts from your airline whatever airline you're flying and follow them on twitter to to stay abreast but right now all we can do is pray for these passengers yeah yeah and uh just a, a terrifying thing now they're saying uh, that eyewitnesses are saying that the plane hit tail first and that's what happened that it uh, broke off the tail crushed the landing gear um but the picture that i that david uh, posted uh shows a uh, essentially attacked uh, unlike the pictures we're seeing now, an essentially attacked, intact airplane except for the tail, and uh, people getting off via the escape slides on the uh, left-hand side of the plane. So uh, let's I mean, hope it, everybody got off safe and sound. Let's do it. And remember, yeah. it's really important to listen to the flight crew and watch the safety video. I know no one wants to watch it. And usually when I'm sitting on there, you know, everyone's trying to do their last-minute messages or whatever. Just, just take the two minutes, and then when you get off the plane in a kind of emergency like this, make sure you don't grab your bags and hold anyone up because, you know, seconds are everything to saving lives. Yeah. It looks like this is the yeah. case.
Yeah, no kidding, because the plane is now a burnt out Hulk on the ground there. You just got to get off as fast as possible. Yeah, wow. Uh, yeah, and if you're sitting in an exit row especially, please pay attention and, <laughs> and to instructions and uh, do the right thing. Obviously, uh, uh, whoever was in the exit row there did the right thing. They were able to get the escape slides out and people off the plane pretty darn quickly. Right, and actually, I, when I was flying last week, I was in uh, Budapest flying to, or I was London, Budapest, and I was I was sitting uh, in the uh, exit row, and there was a Chinese couple who just came on the plane, and they said, do you speak English? And they did not speak English. Actually, was not, they were Japanese, and they just nodded, and she's like, okay, you speak English. And then I said, oh, no, 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 no. Do you, I said, do you want to switch seats? With, I'll switch seats with you to the window, so I'm the first one. To open up the thing yeah. just so you know i mean yeah and i've actually been i've been kicked off out of the exit seat in the, some country because i didn't speak their language right. even though everyone was speak english i don't remember which country it was yeah but it's, it's just important take it seriously uh yeah i've sat with my son in exit rows and i've actually uh, explained to him what's going on and shown him what he will need to do if he needed to do it and uh yeah wow and but it looks like and we're crossing our fingers uh, successful yeah, it looks evacuation. like it's like this is a very happy day if everyone got off. Is there happy any for Asiana? Uh, any, yeah, any other uh, uh, places people can go for information on uh, stuff like this? I mean, I mean right now Twitter is just is is the go-to place, and you, again, you can use the hashtag SFO, and you'll see all kinds of breaking news and people who are some some of the passengers are tweeting their stuff, and then. Um, you know, again, that FAA, and if, if for those who are flying out, and uh, obviously, I think you guys, I think you guys are doing a good job. Yeah, I'm talking about it right yeah. away. I mean, this yeah. just happened. Yeah, it's really, uh, really uh, shocking I'm, to watch something I'm like just this. Trying play to look out. at my feed. Yeah, <laughs> you know, BuzzFeed has been doing was doing a good job too. They're trying to become a news source, which is interesting. Yeah. Up, up to now, I've thought of them as a place to find out what people are talking about on the net, kind of a, a meme a machine. Uh, but, yeah. but, but they've hired a lot of journalists, and they're really trying to become uh, a source of, uh, of news and information. Isn't that interesting? And New York's and NYC Aviation is a good one to follow. Just, it's on not Twitter. just for New York. Yeah, on Twitter. And the same thing with BuzzFeed. I mean, that's how some of these pictures came out that I saw first was right. from BuzzFeed. I would also so, uh, are, I would also uh, uh, go to Johnny Jet's page johnnyjet.com <laughs> uh, or actually uh, your Twitter uh, Johnny Jet at Johnny Jet because you have a number of lists that are very useful on your Twitter feed airlines and I have so every forth. airline yeah. every airport and uh, you know I just I tweeted a couple of things I'm looking at my tweet deck right now I've already had over 200 t retweets on one of the tweets from just now Yeah yeah I mean it's just amazing how fast Twitter works Yeah well, John, uh, I hope your flights yeah. are all safe. You know, one of the Thank things you. that I was telling my son as we flew home from Denver last week, he was saying, I'm a little nervous about flying. I'm kind of scared. And I said, you know, it's safer than it ever has been. Um, it is. Uh, it's really kind of remarkable, in fact, how uh, safe air travel has become. Um, it's safer to fly than it is to drive. And, you know, recently I, I landed on a British Airways flight. And right when we landed at LAX, the captain said, the safest part of your journey is now yeah. over, yeah. so so please be careful driving home. The, yeah, I and told Henry true. that too. But it's, you know, when you're flying through the air at several hundred miles I, an I hour, it's kind of hard too. to believe. I get, <laughs> I get nervous. You know, it's, you know, after watching the movie uh, Cast Away with, Castaway with Tom Hanks, yeah. you know, that crash scene just freaked me yeah. out. So whenever I fly to the South Pacific or Hawaii or Australia and I'm going over the ocean and I, it, that comes in my mind and it just, you know. They don't show those uh, those on the uh, on the airplanes those movies they do they actually did they John actually did <laughs> johnnyjet.com leo laporte the tech guy and <laughs> they did they were showing that seems they, like uh, so now we're seeing on i'm seeing on cnn that uh, the the tail is on the runway so apparently okay. the tail broke off perhaps they landed tail first onto the runway the plane then skidded well, off the runway computer files, um, and a fire broke out but it looks like they got uh, Evacuations uh, shoots off one side of the plane, and everybody was able to. I hope everybody was able to get off. Um, yeah. And then, the, and now, you know that. So the the picture David Deun posted, the plane was not burnt, but now the pictures I'm seeing now, the huge fire Is throughout it burnt? throughout okay. the uh, the plane. Yeah, all the way down. Oh, that's so, why it's so 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 important to get off that plane yeah. as quick as possible. Yeah. I just pray that never happens uh, happens again. Terrifying. But again. 
But again, it, to, repeat, to, fly. to repeat, to uh, repeat, all 303 souls on board accounted for is very, very uh, good news. And, and until uh, that's true, and a mir as you said, a miracle on the Hudson. Uh, repeat it if that's the if that's the case. That's Truly right. Truly, I'm sure you're going to see Captain Sully on the news tonight and yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, that's a hell of a hell be. of a pilot to to, to, yep. bring, to get those people to safety after. Unless he's the one who tail first. We don't know who, why uh, they crashed tail first. Yeah. Yeah. Is, yeah. is it windy there, by the way? Well, it's always a little windy at uh, SFO. Right. It's clear skies. Um, so you know, it's not like ridiculously windy. No, uh, the visibility is good. It's always a little windy coming into SFO, a little choppy, and right. sometimes there's crosswinds. But uh, uh, I don't think it's a norm, uh, abnormal uh, weather right now. In fact, it might be it might be unusually good weather right now. I don't okay. I don't know. Um, well, there'll be an investigation, but the yeah. most important thing is everyone's yeah. safe, yeah. Uh, or we let's hope. hope everyone's safe. We hope. Yeah. Yep. All right, Leo. Well, next week I'll talk about something. Uh, so more say fun. again, where are you? I'm in Erie, Pennsylvania. On Why Lake are you Erie, in Erie, Disney. PA? My dad lives here in the ah. summertime, even though I, we grew up in Connecticut, but this is where he is. So you know, I, I have a, uh, there's a Laporte, or actually it's my uh, my mother's side family plot there that uh, I hope someday to be buried in Erie, PA. Really? You? Yes. Well, maybe Where'd not. you grow up? Uh, well, we have family there. I didn't. I grew up in Rhode Island, but we have family there. It's kind of like you. you. Your dad grew up in Connecticut. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we had family wow. there. Yeah. Wow. But this was well, so. And then, are you with Natalie? Oh no, she. That's right. She went home. No. She had to go home early. You. What you did the Danube She's in cruise. Toronto. Yeah. It's only yeah. a three-hour drive from Toronto oh, that's to not bad. Uh, Erie, Erie, but that's going not over bad. the border. I actually took the Greyhound bus for twenty dollars. <laughs> Such a deal. $20. Do they do you come on board? Say papers, please, as you cross the border. No, you got to get off. Everyone's got to get off. <laughs> oh, take right. all their luggage. Oh, they wow. search the bus. That's the biggest pain. Oof, but no kidding. Twenty dollars. Right. You can't. I'm gonna it. let you go. Thank you, Johnny. Take care. Safe travels. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Ask Leo. That's the phone number. Eight 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 two seven five five three six. Uh, going back to the phones. Let's see. We got a lot of calls. So let me get. To, oh, I, I think we started talking with. Uh, oh, now I forgot. Was it Greg and who? Who was I talking to? You have to? Elijah. As uh, Elijah, Elijah, Eliezer. That's Eliezer. right. Gosh, there you man. go, Eliezer. I'm sorry, Eliezer. Sorry, Leo <laughs> Laporte, the tech guy. Don't worry about it. Um, my iPhone contract is up. AT and iPhone. Uh, it's up next month and. I was looking into T-Mobile, you know, unlock plans. Yeah, they're great and deals. I, In fact, there's there's a hidden plan. If you don't make a lot of phone calls on T-Mobile, there's a $30 a month unlimited text and data, but you only get 100 minutes of talk time a month. $30. Will and, Skype work on the data plan? I mean, yeah. Because that sounds excellent. <laughs> yeah. You, it's good luck finding it. You can only get it on the website. You have to dig around. It's in their um, it's in their play as you go plans, I think. I found it once. <laughs> can you post uh, a link? <laughs> yeah, let, yeah, I'll find it again. I'll put a link in our show notes at techguylabs.com. A number of people I know have it. In fact, well, somebody here has it. And uh, yeah, if you don't make a lot of phone calls or say you want to use Skype instead. Now, of course, uh, what is unlimited data? is uh, something up for grabs. Every company's different. I have a T-Mobile phone that I have the $70 everything plan. That's unlimited everything. And I asked them, I said, well, come on. You're going to throttle me after a certain amount of time. They said, nope. Now, whether that's true or I don't know. But they said, nope, we don't throttle you. Uh, it's unlimited, unlimited. But a lot of these, quote, unlimited plans are unlimited, but after five gigabytes, they slow you down so much you won't want to use it anymore. So I would inquire. Well, I, I asked the rep um, about, you know, bringing in a Nexus device. Like, you know, I can buy one from, like, Nexus Sure. Nexus any unlocked, any any GS, unlocked GSM phone should work fine. Well, he said I will be stuck with 2G speeds. Ah, not okay. Not the pre-approved ones. That's yeah, so thing. that's what you'll have to do. And you may not be able to get that information with the T-Mobile site. Pre-approved just means they looked at it. Uh, what you need to do is, if is it, and you can go, there are lots of sites you can look at. You need to find out if it supports all of the radio frequencies. And the one that is key to you, if you use a lot of data, is HSPA+. Plus. That's the, the fastest 3G speed on the T-Mobile network. They do have LTE, apparently, but I don't know where. Not where I, know where I go. But HSPA+, Plus on T-Mobile, is very fast because, probably because there's so few customers, 
that you're not sharing that data, and it's it's capable of LTE speeds. I'm very I very happily use T-Mobile in my small town, but when I travel, I often pull out the AT&T phone because I'm just not getting good speeds in some areas. So you have to you have to kind of look around and. You know, depends on where you are and, and so forth. And I don't know about Florence, whether T-Mobile's great there or not. But um, So if it says H, uh, HSPA. H, you're looking for HSPA plus capability and uh, and, and the T-Mobile frequency. So, the, so it's really just a couple of uh, Google searches. First to find out what HSPA frequency is for T-Mobile and then to find out if that phone supports that frequency. Okay. Do you know if the Nexus um, 4 from LG supports it? Uh, the Nexus 4 doesn't do LTE. I think a lot of people use it on T-Mobile, and I'm pretty sure it gets HSPA+. Plus. Yeah, That's a nice phone. I don't need LTE. I mean... No. Well, you can't... Yeah, on T-Mobile, you don't. Uh, exactly. Yeah, on T-Mobile, you don't. But uh, HSPA+, Plus goes up to 42 megabits on uh, T-Mobile. That's pretty fast. Mm-hmm. And I will put a link. It's in the prepaid phone plans. You, you know, they hide it because I don't think I think <laughs> I think they want people to use it if they're smart enough to find it. Uh, we'll put a link in the show notes. But what you do is you'll see these uh, prepaid plans, and if you scroll way down to the bottom in fine print, thirty dollars a month, unlimited web and text with a hundred minutes talk, and then it says, yeah, it's, you're throttled at three at uh, five gigs. But you know, five gigs of data is a lot, even if you're using uh, Skype. T-Mobile sells the Nexus 4, so I'm pretty sure a Nexus 4 you'd get at Google would be just fine. I usually use less than two gigs. So yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So this is 30 bucks a month. It's only for somebody. But, you know, nowadays I think a lot of people don't use the phone for a phone. Uh, and if they do, they'll use data instead. Okay. So 30 bucks a month, unlimited web and text, 100 minutes talk. For a lot of us, that's exactly what we want. I'll tell you, there are a lot of geeks around here who uh, use this plan. <laughs> They're very happy. But I would check, you know, all the, the caveats. Somebody's saying it's only good for uh, 90 days. I don't know if that's true, but uh, you, I would want to find out about that. All right, thank you. Hey, good. Enjoy your phone. Take care. 8888-ASK-LEO. It is a, it's a complicated uh, world, <laughs> and, they, and the companies make it that way. They don't, they don't want it to be easy to figure out what their deals are, what their plans are. They they want the more the better more confused the consumer the happier the phone company. Bob in La Cañada, California. You're next. Hi, Bob Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Leo. Thanks for taking my call. I have a situation where I was sent. I was allegedly so supposedly sent three emails notifying me of a certain event. I did. I did never receive them. Okay. The fourth per, the fourth email I got was from the specific person who was in that program. Uh, accusing me of, of ignoring the first three emails. Now, I didn't understand it because I never got to three, so it's a he said, she said that I received the emails when, in fact, I didn't. So Nobody should assume email is a perfect system. Right. But any I, more than the U.S. mail is a perfect system. You ever have any mail go wrong? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. The, the, the problem is is that the only thing, now, I asked her to send me copies of the, of the emails that I supposedly missed. The only thing I can think of is that it looks like the first three emails came out, came out as a system-generated email, okay? Yeah, you probably, in all likelihood, who's your email provider? Uh, it's uh, Yahoo. In all likelihood, Yahoo, which has fairly aggressive spam filtering, decided right. it was spam. And, and that, that's, the only, that's the only logical because you know logical reason that I can come up with because if you look at the emails, the address that it was sent to, it's, it is my address. Okay. Yeah, but if it was sent to your address and a, and a hundred others, no, I understand. I understand, but but here's what happened. Then the fourth correspondence I had, I, I got it from a specific person, and that came through telling me that I would, you know, they were not happy with me ignoring the first three, and I told yeah. them I never got them. I never got them. Yes, you did. Yeah. You know, no, you didn't. I mean, so well, you can't. But you, you can you can say prove that I got them. Well, that's, that's you, what I'm trying to do. You now. can prove you sent them. Yeah. You can't prove I got them. Do you have a read receipt? I didn't get it. Uh, no, I don't, I don't. no, they no. That's what you're asking them. Right, show me, right. show me your read receipt because you have to prove I got them. I didn't get them. Yeah. And you, it, you know, it is a he said, she said because they can say they sent it. They may not have said it. Well, I, I have copies of what they sent, and it you know, supposedly came to me, but I say never, never got to me to my desk. Now, you know, spam. My spam filter. Is, I get three, four hundred uh, letter spam uh, messages a day. Yeah. So I don't even read them. I just get rid of them. So, yeah. you know, I, so I may have received it, but I just got rid of it, okay? 
Now, yeah, that's that's you, that's very possible. Everybody gets a lot of spam. Again, and right. it's no longer the case. It might have been at one time. No longer the case that you can say, "Hey, I sent it. You must have gotten it." Now, are there some are there some markers or something that, that a system generated message would send that a person generated message from a private email? No, uh, no, no. But the, the way spam filters work is they look at characteristics of the mail. And based on the characteristics, they decide that's spam. Now, you should be able to check your Yahoo spam folder to see if it's in there. Now, if you I empty that I, I, regularly, the, I empty that. Yeah. yeah, you empty it all the time. Well, then you can't, then, you know, it probably was spammed. Mass, one of the characteristics is certainly that it was addressed to more than just you. If you want to keep stuff out of your spam filter, in most cases, adding the sender to your address book will work. But, uh, you know, there's all sorts of kind. there's all kinds of spam filters. There's a kind of spam filter called a black hole spam filter that not only uh, does it not go into a spam folder, it doesn't arrive. It uh, mail bounces off the server. I don't know if Yahoo uses black hole servers. They might. Um, so you're just kind of stuck in a loop here. All you can say is, I didn't get it. They can say, well, we sent it. They can't say you got it. They can say, we sent it. But just as with U.S. mail, that's not a guarantee. Uh, and, it, you know, that's kind of why uh, people sometimes use receipts on mail. You can request a receipt. doesn't always work either. But if you have a receipt, then you have pretty good... Uh, it's like sending certified mail through the Postal Service. You have a pretty good idea that the message did get to where it was going. And, and these read receipts uh, are triggered by you opening the message. So it, you know, if they say, so that's what you say to them. Say, well, where's your read receipt? Show me the read receipt that proves that I read it because I never got that message. And I, I don't know what else you can do past that point. You can't prove you didn't get it either, right? Can't prove the negative. 8888-ASK-LEO. Another hour to come of the Tech Guy Show. Give me your ring. Let's talk. Leo Laporte here, the Tech Guy. Well, a good day to you, Leo Laporte here, the tech guy, 8888 Ask Leo is the phone number. We're talking about computers, the internet, social media, YouTube. We're talking digital photography, cell phones, of course, 888-827-5536. My compadre, Heather Haman, the queen of this show. I would be the queen of this show, but uh, I don't have the right wardrobe, uh, is answering the phones for us. Have a Halloween costume with a dress on. Extend on the costume. Oh. Awesome. I'm trying oh. to live that down. Private life. Uh, public uh, life. Yeah. Well, can't. that's the problem. I have no private life. It's all public now. <laughs> Thanks to the internet, everything you do. <laughs> and the NSA. And the NSA, <laughs> right? If they, if the government doesn't know, my friend. So why not just let everybody know, right? Uh, who should? Let's see. I do. Do I have somebody, or should I go to somebody? I think I talked to Eliza. So. Who's, yeah. Who should I talk to next? Your choice, Heather. Oh. You are in charge here. Oh. This is the burden. The <laughs> pressure is on. It really is. Let's talk to Greg in Riverside. Are you sure now? Yes, line okay. four. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Greg. You're the winner, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hey, well, I was I was looking at her. I'm saying, Greg, Greg, Greg. She must <laughs> she, you're channeling. You channeled. Heather picked up the vibe. <laughs> Leo vibes. Leo vibes. Welcome. Well, the, Thanks for taking my call. I have sure. I have a, a wireless issue, but I think you in the chat room will find this very intriguing. So I I uh, have an HP notebook and I uh, operate in my home office over a wired connection. When I go to the local coffee shop and go wireless, even um, even if I it, it's happened four times now. Even if I don't have my wireless connection turned on, there's a function key for that, right. and I have it. I had it turned off. I I. Eliminated the uh, the wireless the uh, SSID for the wireless connection in the coffee shop. I eliminated it from my directory, right from the library of what I've already approved. You told you told it to forget it. To forget it, yeah. yeah. And I just I just open up my notebook and this morning this is the fourth time and it I joins it power button and then the music stopped because they're running Pandora through the you know the, the connection. 
And so he he told me, he came right over. He goes, wow, you brought my network down again. He his cash register through it, so it wasn't right. Wait a minute. Every time you join his network, actually, no, every time you turn on the Wi-Fi, you don't even join his network. I don't even. It, it Leo, breaks his Wi-Fi. Wi on. I just powered it on. <laughs> the Wi-Fi was turned off. Wow. Have you ever heard of anything like that? No. It's that, obviously, that should not happen. Why is it happening is the question. Yeah. Now, at first I thought it was because I, I, I've got a running in the background. I've got a Windows 7 machine, and I've got uh, 323 clients. I've got the uh, Polycom CMA desktop, and they're all present. Yeah, those are those are for making phone calls, SIP clients for so, making phone calls. Yeah, yeah, they're 323 clients. I wonder if that HP laptop, there must be something wrong with a Wi-Fi radio in there that it's just spewing out but garbage. How could it be spewing anything out when I have Do you have this off? problem at any... Well, as soon as you turn it on, you're turn, you're, you know, the radio goes on, obviously. Do you, do you have this trouble anywhere else, uh, in any other coffee shops, anywhere else? Well, you know, I haven't tried it anywhere else. <laughs> you could be like the typhoid Mary of Wi-Fi network. You just walk in and the thing breaks. Well, it is possible to do that, by the way. One of the reasons... Uh, I've heard of Apple iPads and laptops being banned on some college campuses because they do uh, a handshaking thing in such a way that they jam the network. So it is possible that uh, the your HP could be doing something that is, I would guess it's particular to his coffee shop, that the, the DHCP, the, the handshake that's going on between your mm -hmm. computer and his or attempted is jamming his system. And I bet you it won't happen elsewhere. Well, it doesn't happen here with my Asus router that's got a built-in WAP. I mean, I can pull out the cable and, and then hit the function key that turns right. on the uh, the radio, and it works. Yeah. But I don't understand with the, with the radio turned off, theoretically, well, you, why well, when I open up my my notebook and just hit the power button to power oh, up Oh, I see. You're not turning on the Wi-Fi. It's still off. Yeah, it's still off. It's got an orange light on indicating it's powered off or not active and and you know i can i can test that when i'm running the wireless network here at my office and i i'm i hit that orange button the network indicator on the taskbar you know goes into a, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. a symbol symbol that says it's disconnected yeah. and i lose my network connectivity so yeah. huh. it, isn't it odd i mean I wonder if anybody has seen a virus or anything that... No, no, no. It's not a virus. Like no, 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 no. Or a Trojan or... Uh, so uh, Web 3622 is suggesting, and this is a good idea, that instead of just using the button, try disabling it in the control panel for, the, mm -hmm. for that Wi-Fi and just see <laughs> if that same thing happens. It may okay. be that the button isn't really turning off Wi-Fi. I mean, it, doesn't, it still shouldn't do any of this. Nothing, none of this should happen. The Wi-Fi should be on, could be on, and it shouldn't happen. It's something else going on. Huh. Uh, but just check to see if you turn it off in the control panel for the Wi-Fi, if, if you still have this problem. If you do, then the only thing I can think of is there's something else that your <laughs> Wi-Fi is emitting. Sorry, I'm reading the chat. Yeah, I mean, it's like maybe your laptop is is, uh, is a r nuclear power plant. I don't, know, I don't know what it could be doing. I'll just give it a latte. I like what Chip said there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I would. I so know. there's some diagnostic stuff you could still do. Do you like go somewhere else, see if the same thing happens? Look in the control uh -huh. panel, see if it's really off. It might just be that the uh, the the keyboard button, you know, just says don't don't do anything, but still be on. You know, the the transmitter may be still working. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah I, it's very odd. And uh, my suspicion is it's a strange interaction between your laptop and his router that is an unusual interaction. It has to do with the dynamic host control or host configuration protocol, DHCP. Mm -hmm. We've yeah. seen this before. And as I mentioned, um, uh, there were college campuses that were banning iPads because they don't do DHCP right. And Apple's had somewhat of a similar problem with its new MacBook Air Um they, they, the college campuses were saying that these uh, that these um, airports were actually clogging the network. Uh, these air, uh, or rather, iPads were clogging the network, and um, and they didn't want them on the network. It doesn't okay. seem. I, this is very odd. You're, For an HP, I mean, you'd think it. Yeah, it's not like the HP has the universal. super. Yeah, the super duper Wi-Fi connection. Thing. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks for taking my call. Jim in San Diego has to go to make sure you don't have internet connection sharing turned on. 
Oh, I yeah. don't. I don't think so. But I'll no. Get back. And then, and then I think I'll go back to. You're seeing the chat room, so you're seeing this too. So it's probably right. The the coffee shop Wi-Fi is probably just that router is just not is just tipping over. And you yeah, happen to be the in it. you happen to, yeah you happen to be the the guy who's blowing on it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Fall over, yeah. Hey, thanks, thanks for the call, Greg. If I, if anything else comes up, we'll we'll announce it on the air. We'll put it in the show notes. Our show notes are at techguylabs.com. Great place to go for more information. Jesse in Thousand Oaks. Hi, Jesse. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hey, Leo. How hey, are Jesse. You? I'm great. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Um, thanks for taking my call. Um, so I've got kind of a long-winded question for you. Okay. I'm Shopping for a new laptop PC and considering an ACER V5 571P 6609. Mm -hmm. The ACERs are nice. They're low price. Uh, they they have uh, made their name at offering good quality computers for lower prices. Okay. It's a 15.6 inch touch, touch screen Windows mm -hmm. 8. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm, I'm wanting to go. I have an iMac at home. It's, it's that I bought in 2008. Why are you not considering a Mac then? Because I am not working. Yes, so money is an issue. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. And I'm doing volunteering for three Ventura County nonprofits Aren't right you now. Aren't you nice? Well, you know, it's what I, what I love doing. Good for you. Thank you. And so I'm trying to look for a solution that's going to be scalable as each of them grow. Yeah. And um, I'm well, also looking. Hang on, we got to take a break. But uh, this is a good. This is good. We'll see if we can help you find the right notebook. Why, while we're in the break, think about how much you want to spend. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Ask Leo. We're helping Jesse spend a little money. She wants to get a new laptop computer. She's looking at a Windows eight machine from Acer. What is your what is your budget on this, Jesse? Um, a thousand dollars. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah, um, but I kind of figure it's worth spending the money to get something that's going to be scalable. You know? Yeah, you know, I really do believe that. Uh, unfortunately, because of uh, the, the 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 price that f points that fell out of the floor on PCs because of netbooks and so forth, people's mm -hmm. expectations really got awfully low. And people want to buy a laptop for three or four hundred bucks and think it's going to be good. A thousand bucks is plenty. Uh, you should be able to get a very nice. Now, when you say scalable, though, I'm a little worried because you know most laptops are not particularly upgradable. Oh, they aren't. No, you can add memory. Sometimes you can add uh, extra hard drive or an external hard drive. What What is it that What is the scale that you want? What What is it that you want to? You know, I haven't defined that yet, but um, you just want you think that it, you may mean, need a more powerful laptop in time. Yeah, I, I sure will. And when I'm working, you know, I can afford to invest in a MacBook Pro or something. Right. Although I have to say, at a thousand bucks, you can get a MacBook Air for a thousand bucks. Now it's only an eleven-inch screen; it's a tiny screen. Well, yeah, that won't work for me because yeah. I'm <laughs> and I love these touch screens. I have to say, I'm a little disappointed Apple has uh, has not yet ab adopted these. Uh, and with Windows 8, I highly recommend a touch screen. Windows 8 is very touch focused. Yeah, it's great, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Well, if you like it, uh, then I would say um, that Acer is a good choice. Okay, I can get it at Costco for like seven hundred dollars. Yeah, that's a good choice. How much RAM is there in that? Um, I don't know. I think it's. It probably eight gigs is probably enough for the next five years. I would. It's guess. got a terabyte of um, terabyte of uh, hard drive. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, and if you needed more than that, you probably don't. If you needed more than that, then you can always use an external drive. More than a terabyte, you know, if you, is for like video. You know, are you, are you doing video editing or? I will be. You will be. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you will max it out then, because video editing is the most challenging. Oh okay. And occupies the most hard drive space. Uh, so a terabyte hard drive, yeah. I mean, I would look at just Acer again is kind of the position themselves as the a low price, high end. I have an Acer S7, which I love, but it's a little atypical for Acer. Uh, I would also look at as long as you're looking ASUS, Asus. Oh, ASUS. ASUS. Lenovo's very good. Lenovo's really the 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 tough, well-made, 
business computer. You want to look at business grade computers versus consumer grade computers. Okay. Uh, and then finally, Dell is very good as well. Okay, you're not mentioning HP. I don't like HP laptops. No. Okay. You, need you heard our last know. caller. <laughs> He's got a HP laptop that brings a net. I don't know if that's normal, but <laughs> I'm not crazy about that. I would get the business grade uh, Dell, a business grade Lenovo. Um, those are the those are the better uh, laptop computers. Would you pop for the i7 processor? No, you do not need it. Oh, okay. Okay. You do not need it. Uh, i5 that'll save you some money. Don't get an i3. Get an i5. Right. Uh, if you can get Haswell, you get battery battery life. If, is, is battery life an issue for you? Um, you know, I haven't worked on a laptop in years. So probably it might be, but I, I don't really know. Yeah, it's only, you know, to me, uh, you know, I, <laughs> I, it's always plugged in. I'm either at work or I'm at home. Right. Uh, right. I don't spend 12 hours in a coffee shop. <laughs> and I don't, and, you know, I don't go on 12-hour flights all that often. So, uh, you know, a five- or six-hour battery life is plenty. Huh? But you do get better. You get about 50% better battery life on these new fourth-generation i5s. Fourth generation i5. So I would look, you know, for fourth generation i5. Uh, I would look for eight gigabytes of memory, uh, terabytes of good size hard drive. Although what you'll see in a lot of these now laptops is they don't use, they have smaller drives because they use flash drives, solid state drives instead of spinning mm -hmm. drives. Mm -hmm. And they'll be half as big or even less, uh, but, and, and maybe even more expensive, but they're so much faster. And if you're doing video editing, you can always use an external drive for the big, bulky files. It's nice okay. to have a fast uh, boot up time, fast load time. That makes a big gen big difference. So okay. I would look at an SSD. SSD. SSD, solid state drive. Solid state drive. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's it, that's going to give you a big difference in performance speed. It's funny we talk a lot about processor speed, but really a fast hard drive might make an even bigger difference. Thinking of going with Office 365 because yeah, got, do you like that? Yeah, I do. Choice? Yeah, if you need Office, that's the way to go now. Okay, and um, it's like ten bucks a month or something, and it's and it's automatically updated. You can install it on a variety of machines. I think that's a good choice. You can yeah. even put it on your Mac if you bought Office 365. You get five licenses, including Mac. Yeah, yeah, I could do that. And then if I'm in a board meeting for one of these nonprofits, then we could pull data up. That would be yes. accessible to all the board members. That's, That's true, fun. too. Yep, because it's online as well as uh, on the hard drive. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Leo. My great pleasure. Good luck. Okay, thank you. All right, take care, Jesse. It's hard now because there's so many choices. Same thing in the phone space, the cell phone space. There's so many choices. I celebrate that. I think that's a good thing. I really do. Uh, it means it's harder to choose, harder to buy, but, boy, there's something for everybody. Martin in Los Angeles, you're next. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Martin. Hi, Leo. Thanks for taking my call. Thanks for calling. What can I do for you? Okay, I'm having trouble connecting to my Internet. Um, in the past, I've always gotten an open with um, message box, and I've been able to get on um, to connect to the Internet that way. However, recently, when I tried to go on the Internet, um, it just keeps saying the Windows is not responding. And it just spins and spins. When you say open with, you're not in your browser, you're in an email program or something like that? Why is it, what's happening? You're clicking a link in another program and it says open with? No, um, just as soon as I'm, from the moment I try to get onto the Internet to open, to connect to the Internet Explorer, that mess, that box comes up. You should it's never open. see that box just for that. That's so. There's something wrong. There was something wrong. Now it's really messed up. <laughs> right, and that that had been ha happening for a few, you know, a few. And when, when, when it said open with, what did you say? Internet Explorer. Um, well, I would say open with. It says the program you want to use to open this file, and I would click uh, yeah. where it says look for the appropriate program on the oh, web. Oh man, that's a pain. Every time you had to do that. Yeah, I didn't mind it because I would be able to connect to the Internet. Yeah. But now, it's amazing how we get used to the worst <laughs> situations. <laughs> that is really annoying. If you click on the Internet Explorer icon, it should just open. It shouldn't say open with what. So there's something right. messed up already. Right, right. Yeah, something uh, messed up already. Uh, have you tried, say, Google Chrome, another browser in there? No, I have not. I would try another browser just to see if it's your Internet. I don't think it's your Internet. I think... 
your your browser is messed up. And okay. uh, so, uh, of course, you can't get on. Can you not get online at all now? No, I can't at all. It'll just keep spinning, and it's yeah. There's something. Waiting. There's something seriously wrong. My guess is that your system could very well have some malware on it. This does not sound right. I'd bring it in to get it checked. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Under the squid port. That's where I'd like to be. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 8888. Ask Leo. That's the phone number we're talking about. Computers, the internet, cell phones, camcorders, MP3 players. Uh, let's see. Steve is next in Ohio. Hi, Steve. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Is this Leo? This be he. To coin a phrase from Wayne's world, we're not worthy. <laughs> I hope, I trust you're bowing down when you say that. I am. Uh, I made the big jump. Yes. I went from, I finally uh, upgraded from Windows Vista to Windows 7. Good jump. Well done. Uh, I, ha uh, I have, I, I take my computer to uh, a shop that, been real good in keeping all of my stuff going and and they upgraded to windows but they only installed windows bit 32 ah uh i've got a uh and you said that something about you didn't like hp i've had my hp computer laptop for four and a half years now haven't had a bit of problem with it i got the gt70 it's got a big 17 inch screen on it good man it. I'm, I'm not going to knock it. If you like it, I'm not going to knock it. Now, how much RAM, how much RAM memory do you have on that machine? Got uh, six gigs. Okay, so you do want the 64-bit version because 32-bit Windows will only see four gigs of RAM. Okay. Total. Some of that's eaten up by system memory. So if you have six gigabytes of RAM on there, you're not seeing... All your memory you've got installed, so you do want the uh, th the 64-bit version of Windows 7. It's, it, the only, it's it, by the way, it's about the only reason I would recommend it. Otherwise, it operates exactly the same. It's not, you know, there's not any real advantage. A lot of times, I think we think it's a bigger number; it must be better. It's not. It's just 64-bit. Okay. <laughs> is it is it easy to do? Uh, yeah, you have to reinstall. And just go out and buy a Windows 64 bit and then just. All Windows 7 discs have both 32 and 64 on it. Do you have a Windows 7 disc when he installed it? Did he give you the disc? Yeah, he gave, he gave me the disc, but, it, but all it says on it is Windows 32 bit. <laughs> is it written in, in uh, Sharpie? No. Um, no? It's a, it's a genuine Windows disc. And it says Windows 7 32 bit on the disc? Yeah. Oh well, maybe they did that with some OEM folks. Uh, normal a normal version of Windows Seven, even the upgrade disc, will have both sixty four and thirty two on it. So yeah, you you want to get the uh, sixty four bit version. And they just pop the disc in and and install it right over the thirty two. Yeah. Uh, no, I think you're going to have to end up wiping it and starting over. Yeah. Well, that's fine. There's there's nothing on mine that you know, if I lose it tomorrow, it's no big deal. Okay, then this would be a good time to do it. So, yeah, they have chat room saying, yeah, it must be an OEM disc, which means a disc that ships with a new computer. Those discs only have one version of Windows. But any disc you buy at retail will have, and you can get the upgrade edition, by the way. You don't need to get the full edition. That'll have 64 gigs, 64-bit version on there. I'll save some money just getting the upgrade then. Yeah, just get the upgrade. Don't get the full version. Leo, again, you saved my butt. Well, you're enjoy you're going to enjoy that. I think Windows 7 is the best version of Windows ever made. I'm not a real fan of Windows 8, as you know. I'm pretty happy. Um, and uh, by the way, uh, according to, and we're going to put this link in the chat room, but according to somebody, uh, rather on the webpage, page, somebody in the chat room, you should be able to use the same license key that you've already got. So you may not need to go buy a 64-bit version of Windows. You can download it from Microsoft, put it on a disk, install it, and then use the same license key that you got with your uh, computer. Windows 7 license key, that whichever one you've got, is good for both. So you don't need to buy another copy. You can download it from Microsoft. And I, and I have to say, I, I know <laughs> there's a definite psychological component to this. People in the chat room are saying, oh, 64-bit runs faster. And does not. In fact, in, in some cases, it would actually run slower. 
there is only one reason to have 64-bit, and that is for addressing a larger amount of memory. And it, cause, it can cause other issues. It can cause uh, compatibility issues with drivers and so forth. Nowadays, everything's 64-bit. You might as well just go with it. Barbara in Los Angeles, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Barbara. Yes. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. My name is Barbara, and I live in Los Angeles. Hi, Barbara. And I was a caregiver for my daddy for 11 years. And um, when, I was in, when he was in the hospital dying, I took my computer in every day. Oh, Barbara. And I journaled his dying words. Oh, Barbara. <laughs> and they're gone. Oh, dear. All right. Now, take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. So how, how long have you... Is, is, uh, was this a while ago? Was this recently you did this? Um, it was in 2012. Okay. So it was last year. And this is what happened. I took the computer in every single day, and as he was dying, I would write down his words. Yeah, I understand. And, what, and, and so they were on that computer... Yeah. And, and the, then what happened to the computer that you've you've well, lost it? You know, oh, let me tell you, it, it is a Microsoft Works yeah. word processor. I understand. Microsoft Works yes. word processor, yes. and it's Windows XP. Okay. And here's what happened. I was making changes to it. You know, I was putting in new additions or changes, and then a screen, screen comes up, and it says, um... Quote, C colon slash documents and settings slash Barbara Bittar slash my document slash note God. I call them notes from God or note God. Uh, point, uh, uh, period WPS, unquote, is already open. Reopening causes changes to be discarded. Yeah, yeah. Do you desire to reopen? And I said, okay, because I thought if my changes are discarded, it's no big, big deal. Big I, deal, right, yeah. I just put in a few changes and I can put them back. And... I looked. The next thing I knew, sir, the whole page was blank. Seventy. Oh boy, oh boy. Seventy-five pages. Okay. Now I went to a friend of my fiance, and he was able to retrieve it up until December 2011. And I am totally confused that the year he went to be with Jesus in 2012 is all gone. Well, and yeah, I and uh, it, uh, unf yeah, mm, well, mm hmm. I think that almost certainly on the computer, well, I think your friend might have found it. There are backups as yes. you're making as you're making the document. It makes a copy of it. Yes, sir. And there should be a backup now. Uh, Please, it's always a risk yeah. when you when you do something like this. It's always a risk, and so f it's too late now. I'm sorry to say, but for future reference, you always you never want to just have one copy of that file. Yes. Yeah, and so um, it is it is completely, I hate to tell you this, possible that it's gone forever. What? Well, I just don't know because I don't know what happened. Uh, it could be that that error message was a signal that you had a blank document open and you saved it on top of the old document. So the only hope for you at this point is that there is a backup copy, and most of the time Works does do this. It makes a .bak file. But I don't want you to mess with it anymore because, and I'm and I'm hoping that the fellow who helped you out didn't mess this up either, because these files. I mean, you could you you you've got, you're hanging by a thread here with these files. You want to make sure that you bring it to somebody who knows what he's doing, and can look through this file, this uh, hard drive, and find all the backups and save it. But uh, it's got to be an expert. It's got to be an expert. And I don't want to walk you through anything that would, by accident, delete any data. So I am sure that the data still lives there. I am. But, uh, you and you may have lost a few paragraphs. I don't know. You shouldn't have lost a whole year's worth. It makes backups to my, and this is an old program, but it's my, my memory that it makes backups on a regular basis. So find a good computer store. And bring it in to somebody who really knows what they're doing and, and tell ask them to help you here. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. I don't think she's going to need to do data recovery. I don't think that's the issue. I think there's backup files that will go all the way back. When it comes to backing up your computer files, there are two very important things to consider. Redundancy and trust. It's a shame that people uh, uh, don't know to make 
copies of stuff. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think what happened. She sounds like, unfortunately, she was saving everything to one file. Years of notes. 75 pages of notes to one file. She perhaps opened a new blank file and saved it on top of the old one. But I'm pretty sure uh, that it would make a .bak. I don't think it's a, a delete issue. I think it's un. I I don't. You know, it's been so long since I used Microsoft Works. Word would make a backup before it would do that. So there is a previous version backup in Word. Whether Word, I'm pretty sure Works did that. You don't think so? Oh, she's out of luck. You know, Archandra, it's possible, and certainly that's why if she goes to somebody who knows what they're doing, they can probably figure out if there's it's possible to recover it. If you saved it with the same name on top of the old one, it could well have been overwritten. Once it's overwritten, it's kind of... Works. Backup files placed in their default... Well, but this is backed up. Ah, it is a BPS file. All right. Ah, but you have to tell Works to automatically do this. I bet you anything she didn't have it turned on. So she would have had to have that turned on. From File menu, select Save As. Select the Make Backup Copy checkbox. Click OK. If she did do that, then from file, she could click it, open existing file, list files of type box, click all files. In the file name box, click the backup file name from the list. Well, maybe she did that. <laughs> yeah, that's his chair. He doesn't like it when people sit there. As soon as they leave, he gets right in that chair. So that's my chair. He gets, I walk him. It's good for him to walk. It's only half a mile, but he's got little tiny legs. So I try to walk him in and walk him home each day. He gets a, a mile walk. That wipes him out. <laughs> says, well, I'm tired. Are his eyes open, though? Yeah. <laughs> he pretty much spends most of the time doing that. What's his name? Yeah. Did you see his head go up? You know your name, don't you? He says, I wonder if you're going to give me any of that chili. I sure would like some chili. It'd be good to have some chili right about now. I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry. I'm so, so hungry. Ah, oh, sad. That poor woman. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. I feel so bad for Barbara. Microsoft works. She's been taking notes uh, as her father uh, was passing away and got lots of notes, uh, things he talked about, his final words. And unfortunately, uh, due to a mishap, that file seems to have disappeared, at least the notes in it. A friend was able to get her back to 2011, but she's lo lost all of 2012. A couple of things... <laughs> Never, ever rely on a computer to save that kind of stuff. You should be always making copies. Print out, you know, a great copy is a printout. Print it out every once in a while. Um, saving especially a lot of data, 75 pages into a single file, gets more and more risky. Now, Microsoft does, uh, I'm, uh, thanks to somebody in the chat room who sent me a link, Microsoft Works will make a backup copy of files as you work, but only if you told it to. So I'm hoping Barbara, at some point when she 
clicked save as, she checked the box that says make up make backup copy because it won't do it automatically, unfortunately. Microsoft Word will, but uh, Works does not. So uh, there is a backup folder with files with the extension .bps. That's the backup word processor file. So what I would do, Barbara, is search your hard drive for files that have that extension star .bps. That means everything that has .bps at the end of the name. Make a copy of all of that stuff onto a disk, another disk, an external disk, a USB key, something. Before you do anything else, just make a copy of all of those files. Search for .wps files, too. Those are the originals. Make copies of all of those. Then bring it into somebody who knows what they're doing. They can maybe do some file recovery. It's not necessarily gone, but uh, it's touch and go. Sorry to say. It's touch and go, and I am so sorry that that happened. Uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, I'm going to see if I can cheer myself up here after that sad story. You know now, I don't have to tell you. Ba back it up. Back it up, folks. Mr. Dick D. Bartolo is here, Mad Magazine's maddest writer. He's our giz whiz. Joins us each and every week to talk about a gadget of the day. Hello, Dick. Leo, how you doing? I'm well. So I was surprised to see that I was actually inadvertently guessed right on last uh, month's uh, What the Heck is a Contest. It was yeah, a, you did. It was you a slap did. bracelet. <laughs> It looked yeah, like you, one. I should never have yeah, said that. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, you know what? Sometimes it's fun to do something that's obvious and say, let's see how many people really guess it, or fortunately, most people like the other part of the game. They prefer to make up a silly answer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, silly, stupid stuff. So you did have some uh, winners, though, who, who figured it out. Yeah, nine people, and seven of the nine knew it was from Night Eyes, and it. they even knew the name. I think it's called the... The slap light, LED. So it lights up bracelet. when you slap your wrist with it. Yes, and, and then you can hit it for for a steady or flashing. So if you go out jogging, it's a good safety. But see, benefit. I like I, those yeah. people won um, autograph Mad magazines. But then, a lot more people just made up silly answers. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know. Uh, uh, a strap teachers keep rolled up in their desk. and you know. <laughs> A Gene Simmons novelty roll-up tongue. That's good. A lot of Gene Simmons <laughs> answers. All right, so this week at Gizwiz, or this month at Gizwiz.biz, is a new picture of a close-up picture of some sort of strange gadget. I'm not going to make any guesses because it's, like, it's no, pretty no, obviously like. uh, Mickey Mouse ears for, uh, for rodents. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not going to. I gonna... think it's four people talking on uh, Twit on Sunday night <laughs> in, in character. If you want to win an autographed copy of Mad Magazine, gizwiz.biz, that's the place to go. And actually, while you're there, right on the front page, Dick has links to all the gadgets he talks about, including this week's gadget. What is this week's gadget? Uh, this this week's gadget, you know, uh, two weeks ago was the CE Line show. No 3D TVs, Leo. None. None, no. Wow. A, a lot of 4K. You know, it's going to be years before anybody's going to really have a use for 4K, right? Yeah, because there's no... But, you know, that happened with HD, too. There was no HD content for a while. But once the TVs were out there, people started making the movies. And, I, I you know, movies are made in 4K now. So it's just a matter of time of figuring out some way to get the data there. Okay. Well, yeah. I, I, I'm going to talk about a real cheapy thing that's available now. You know, Westinghouse had a 4K whiteboard that's not coming out till late fall. But SoundPop, uh, and, and I like this idea, there were a million Bluetooth speakers. I just went from table to table and <laughs> I got yeah. to this one table. And the guy said, I have a wireless Bluetooth. I said, sir, unless it does something different. <laughs> I've heard said, them how all. About, how about it snaps onto the back of your phone, acts as a stand for your phone. Oh, okay. Has really decent sound and is just about the size of a baseball and sells for less than 40 bucks. I said, I like it. Let me hear it. It kind of, so, kind of uh, looks like a baseball. A yeah, it looks like a blue baseball. baseball. Exactly. It comes in many colors. And he said, here, you know, take it home because here in the hall, you, you really can't tell. The sound is really excellent. I, I didn't realize, he didn't even mention it at the show. I didn't realize till I was looking at it that there was a picture of a microphone on the side. And it oh. turns out that it's also a speaker for phone calls. Is that a it, suction the, cup on it? 
Yes, it's a suction cup. So it's Leo. suction it, cups onto the back of your phone. <laughs> phone or it's water resistant. In the uh, shower. Slap it, on, slap it on the wall in the shower, not uh -huh. under the water, but uh, uh, up top. Anywhere you want to have music. <laughs> Can you speak just... a little louder? I'm in the shower right now. <laughs> And the suction is really uh, very good. And they do tell you there's a little tab on the side of it. And it said, don't pull it directly off the wall or you can actually damage it. Release it with the little blue tab or whatever. Uh, the tab will be whatever color you buy. Um, and on Amazon, this guy is 38 bucks. It's called Ooh, it Sound. Comes, it comes in oh. camo, bubble gum, black, orange yellow variety of colors too yeah I, they actually they don't even, oh they're, they're more zebra say, stripe white <laughs> royal i had navy it's not even showing navy on that yeah guy. well yeah. wow holy cow i want the zebra yeah. stripe one you never lose that no well you ozzy if, uh, you might mistake it for might it, yeah <laughs> how much is um, it it's 38 bucks oh. uh on amazon and it's from and it sounds okay uh, what, yeah, it's, you know the sound is very is very decent for its size. Very impressed with it. Wow, for its size and price, I say it's a buy. It's oh, a wait, buy. That's the wrong show. Wait, I mean, somebody's sneaking up behind you. Don't don't look. Oh now. yes, it is. It is service time because Myra's here and oh. uh, she demands attention. <laughs> <laughs> she just slipped me a note and said, "I've been here 17 minutes. I don't see Where, food." Where's my food. hors d'oeuvres? <laughs> Right. So Dennis has brought down hors d'oeuvres for the Gizwiz and Myra. Stick around. Dick will be doing our Giz Fizz on our podcast network right after the radio show uh, ends. And, of course, yes. every Tuesday we do the weekly show, the Gizwiz, where we uh, talk about gadgets and so forth at uh, 2 p.m. I have an idea. I know what you're going to talk about on Tuesday. 5 p.m. Is Eastern. it something being built at this moment? I don't know. I don't think it's going to be this week. Oh, it's not? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. we have in our studio intern Jeff Needles... Who apparently we pay quite a bit of money to. I didn't. I thought interns were unpaid, but apparently Jeff, because he is a, lo, a Lego master, he is building a four foot long replica of uh, some sort of Star Wars uh, starfighter. Good. Yeah, quite a thing. Yeah, I was a lot watching. Yeah, I'm very impressed. He just. He's yeah. You know, he started at the beginning of the show. I don't know. He's, he's, I don't know exactly how long it's going to take him. Maybe a, he said maybe a couple of days, but look how look how precise he is. He puts the pieces on the instruction manual to make sure he's got the right oh. pieces. Then he assembles it. Then he snaps it on. It's quite amazing. Yeah, this is good. This is preparing him for what? No idea. It's a good internship. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> right. Hey, somebody must have a job doing this. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Somebody. All right, uh, my friend. Thank you, Dick D. Bartolo. The Gizwiz, gizwiz.biz is the place to go if you want to play the What the Heck Is It game in a last chance. Actually, it's a brand new game, so it's just the beginning uh, to win an autographed copy of Mad Magazine. Now, our last call of the day, and that would be Eric in Omaha, Nebraska. Hi, Eric. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hey, Leo. I have a quick question for you for a cell phone. Okay. I, uh, I just got a Galaxy S2 from Ting. And the problem is, is that it's brand new. Everything's updated, but the battery's only lasting for about eight hours. Yeah, that's not unusual, and it takes a lot of playing with Android phones to get the battery life up. Generally, what I've done in the past is just buy two batteries. I have four batteries for my Galaxy S4, and uh, you know, eight hours is not enough. I think a phone has to go a minimum of twelve and. Ideally, 16 hours so that you can get through the day, sleep eight hours, charge the phone, get up, and have another 16 hours. But eight hours is not unusual with Android. A couple of things you can do, uh, turn off Facebook updates. In fact, the updates are what kills battery life on phones. So um, visit xda-developers.com and look at the battery life postings there. There's some great tips. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Well, that's it for the Tech Guy show for today. I'm Leo Laporte. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget, the Tech Guy is just the tip of the iceberg. We do nearly 30 shows now on the Twit Netcast Network, and you'll find them all at twit.tv. We talk about Windows and Windows Weekly, Macintosh and MacBreak Weekly, iPad and iPad Today. You get your daily dose of tech news from Tech News Today in our weekly roundtable show, This Week in Tech. It's all at twit.tv. 
And I'll be back next time with another great Tech Guy podcast. Thanks for joining me. See you next time. 